And now, The Bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. It's Monday. It's 6 p.m. Eastern time. Coming in all somber, huh? What does that mean, you think? What? 6 p.m.? It's probably Eastern time on a Monday? Mm, time for The Bonfire? <laughs> it is time for The Bonfire, everybody. It's Comedy Central Radio, Series XM 95. I'm Big J Okerson. That sex machine across the table is Dan oh, Soder. That is an out of order uh, sex. Well, I'd be a sex soda machine. <laughs> I am out of order. Are you one of those cool soda machines you find that still cost seventy five cents for a can? Uh, yeah, with the rounded ones that you can punch and hope you get a free one. <laughs> I didn't hand- know that was a thing. Really, you stick your hand up in me, you'll get a free one. <laughs> I would, What's the furthest you've gone to try to get a vending machine to give you what it fucked you over on? Oh, spin I've kicks? Had, uh, yeah, yeah. I've gone full zero to sixty on a snack machine once. Just shoulder shots. I give it like a like wrestling shoulder, like, like, like you're shoulder just checks. A, a famous Amos bag hang on by a thread. Oh, dude, on fucking glue. Have you ever gotten it? Yes. It's. Uh, have you ever Have you ever gotten the double where yeah. they and then the next one comes out and you're like. Man, I just beat the system. Oh, yeah. It does feel good. Because, again, the 0 to 60, that's where it does serve me, where I run hot oh, yeah. quick, and mm-hmm. all of a sudden I'm like, fuck it, and I'll just rock the whole thing. Oh, you're like, finally, violence was the answer. Yeah. There's very few situations where violence is the answer. Drink this in, kids. Dan, start over, please. Hi, I'm Dan Soder from MTV2's Guy Court. Are you thinking about <laughs> assault? Well, I'll get you out. <laughs> Have I got an idea for you? I can get you out of assault. Actually, I can't. Throw your haunches into it, you idiot. Yeah, come on. Spin your hips into it. Your power is in your feet planted and in your hips. It's 4 a.m., and you want those Welch's fruit snacks, and you don't want to go down to the front desk in your socks. Yeah. Oh. These are all real problems that you, we, you've definitely had also. Yeah, it's this Hampton Inn and Sweets' problem <laughs> that their candy machine is all rickety. I've beaten the shit out of a candy machine. Was, I haven't gotten that many fights in my life, but I have fucked up some candy machines. What's the, what's the worst? Have you ever just ordered dessert from room service? Yeah, like, uh, late, late recently. Time? Really? Recently. In What'd LA. It's never worth it. Any place there's legal pot, it always happens. It's it never was worth it. Cookie sandwich, and let me tell With you- ice cream in the middle? Yeah. Oh, you know, maybe that was worth it. It was until the second bite where I bit too hard and the fucking ice cream shot out the back. And then it's just two the cookie, whole thing. It's just two cookies slammed together, and it's just a, a ball of melting ice cream on a plate. Oh, it was on a plate though. No, well, I picked up. I'll the sandwich. sandwich that thing right back up. Yeah, me too. But then it just kept slipping out, and it was like it was mocking me. I'll use the the cookies like chopsticks. You know what I ended up <laughs> doing? Get out. I ended up I'll doing. Keep picking up the ice cream. I did a cookie hands. What do you where mean? I, where I would take one cookie and dip it in and then bite it, and then another cookie dip it in and bite it. Oh, you open-faced it. Open-faced. I did it a deli open-faced ice cream sandwich. Oh, you benedicted it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a, bened- a Bennigan's. No, no. A bened- you, did, you did like the eggs Bennigan's. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, this is laid out on a nice... And I put salmon on it, too. Do or you know, hollandaise. My thing is to always make... Uh, a bigger thing to bite into. I don't know why, because I don't actually enjoy it that sure. much. Food size queen? I am. I'll tell you what, there's different attacks to that. Christine, I've noticed through time, yeah. is how many ways can I break this down to have it last and take so much longer? Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm, like, I'm Christine a- would make, before Christine ate a McDonald's cheeseburger, she would make eight little <laughs> tiny pizza slice sized cheeseburger bites and then she would eat those with a fork and knife no 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 i like to mix it she really likes to make love to it not me i come in and fuck that food hard oh, dude i i don't even take the the wrapper all the way off i'll do i'll do you in the wrapper <laughs> but you guys had a cheat day i mean i we all did a cheat day did you guys do yours yesterday we, we do cheat meal now because i did mine did for wrestlemania and uh, jacob brought over a delicious coffee cake with let me just start by saying came at the right time it was near the end of WrestleMania, everyone enjoyed it. Was, uh, old. was there some? Was there crumb on it? There was crumb. Crumb top. There was crumb top. A little dusted light sugar. Uh, yeah. And he brought it over warm. It was still warm. I was eating it. I was eating slices in my hand. Was it a my, yellow cake? But it had like a nice, like a little hard shell to it, sort of. No, nah, it was brown. The whole thing was brown all the way through. It's bullshit. You can keep it. I uh, yeah. slapped to your face, but it was delicious. Yeah, you could have it. Thanks, Jacob. It made uh, it made uh, watching the end of WrestleMania very enjoyable. Oh. I love Christine, and I bake. I mean, these are just <laughs> facts from Jacob. It's two things. He yeah. does not bake for Christine, however. Um, but you guys did yours from your because you guys started your diet last week, so this was the first. It was the first meal. Yeah, it was. Uh, 
It was great. I had a blast. It went a little south in Haywire for Christine. I don't Which know why. Which is what I heard, and this is why I bring this up. You know what, though? And this, bu- this bums me out. I felt bad about it, and Christine has complained about this historically with me when we've done successful diets before. Yeah. She doesn't like this. When we're doing cheat meal, I still... And by the way, I think this will prove that I'm probably right to do it. I still give her a little... Shit's the wrong word, but I still make her aware. I'm like... Stop doing that. It's like you're gonna. You're, it's not gonna be good in a minute because you don't. You're not supposed to wash down Cheetos with milk. Oh, and uh, you can though. I'm a child. Yeah, I get it. I eat like that. So it feels bad to be holding uh, uh, two different kinds of hoagie in each hands and trying to like <laughs> double barrel like walrus tusk them. Like I'm yeah. fucking trying to prove something in the world of porn. Mm. Um, and, and while I'm doing that, to look at somebody and go, it "Goes Christine, you literally, you don't like getting up to do." trivial things you've gotten up three times to go get another ridiculous handful of of baked cheetos yeah i get it yeah still baked i'll tell you what i'll tell you why i go for baked the same reason why i never on a never on a cheat day or cheat meal anything do i ever go and i'm getting a regular coke it's because coke zero tastes exactly the fucking Uh, same to me well i'll tell you this and uh, and, and baked cheetos are you won't tell the difference that's my d dude um, I got regular Cheetos yesterday. It's the best. I promise you, if you taste tested, you'd have no idea if they were next to each other. Then let's fucking do it. I- I'll fucking do it. You want to fucking go? I'll fucking do it. Fight me. It's <laughs> <laughs> Fight me right now. I Yeah, dude, I like... Um, I don't I'll wanna, try those. I don't want to get into a super sad story, but if someone needs help, we should always help them. We don't have to take the call, but Jeff in Illinois wants to know what book did you read to get sober? It's called... The Easy Way to Stop Drinking by Alan Carr. The Easy Way to Stop Drinking. The Easy Way to Stop Drinking, because he tells you you don't quit anything. You just stop doing it. That's right. It's so true. Jeff, I hope that uh, helps yeah, in Jeff, some way. Go pick I've it up. through it's countless on- rehabilitation ideas, and I really like that one. Yeah, that book was really good. Because it kind of informs you that alcohol is pretty much bad for anybody that overdoes it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just basically like, uh, it's, you know... I don't know what it's about. Um, and Jordan, North Carolina, wants to know when we're going to discuss Wild Wild Country. Uh, just to answer the question, right, we have yet. to wait for Dan to finish. Oh, can I tell you this? Yeah. I really lost my momentum, dude. I don't know if it was WrestleMania weekend or whatever, but I was. I watched five of the six episodes. It was I'm WrestleMania on, weekend. I'm watching, the, yeah. I'm watching the, I have the sixth one to watch. You know what? We took a little pause between, it was like we got through four in one day, and then getting LA. through five and six took a while. Was that, it was We were in LA. LA. Uh, absolutely. But anyway, to go back to the cheat meal. Yeah. I got two different kinds of hoagie. Okay. From roast where? Roast beef. Sunny Nanny's, which is bias, which is just, I mean, they make it thick. Okay. I would describe it almost as girthy. Okay. It's a girthy, girthy sandwich. Well, double meat. Mm. All right, Christine. I don't know if you're going to tell me how we order it. I mean, it's the whole thing I tell you I love about Wawa is they don't make me say it out loud. I just push a button that says double meat. Just you know, say it, Jay. <laughs> For what I'll describe to be as a fair price, they offer you double meat. Uh, Jay, Jay likes to roll around like a piggy. It's you great. Put the meat on the ground and he rolls around in it. I, uh, <laughs> and by the way, when we order it too, I always feel like because she does it, she makes the order. Yeah. But I feel like the Asian guy from the deli who hates us. By the way, we've had a real history with this guy. Well, you guys are particular. Yeah. Well, you're very particular. He. Yeah, Christine, probably even more so than me on most yeah, things. Yeah, and I've ordered food with you guys. It's tough. Yeah, and I'm a real, I'm a real, just like in restaurants, I wear it. You know what I mean? Like if they fuck up, I'm always like, ah, dude, whatever, man. You got a lot of tables. I get it. But like, I've seen Jay and Christine like this isn't the way we ordered it, and you're like, <laughs> well, no, me, I, I, I'm not that guy too, too much. Yeah, quite honestly, Christine's much more. And the problem is, it's going to come wrong because Christine asks for a lot of like other shit with it too it's like know this extra this little bit of that a lot of that 40 things on the side and blah blah you're very big on that and then you freak out when it doesn't come she ordered four empanadas four yeah. she ordered four empanadas yesterday but she gets 63 sauces and if there's not 63 watch out and then we throw out 60 sauces no no i get eight sauces i need a red and a green for each empanada but i probably only need two red and four green but i stand by i need one green for empanada i get it as a sauce guy 
and this is this is probably us being alcoholics. Mm-hmm. Sauce is the is the liquid of the food world. <laughs> I need mean, sauce, but it is like I love dipping sauces. When I get that so street I. meat on Fifty Fourth, mm-hmm. I uh, I I make it like a thing. Like it's the only time I assert myself is when I'm like more white sauce, and then I put it in. I go, you can I get like two more? And the guy goes to reach for it. He goes, all right, thank you. And like hands me back. I go. One more. The, <laughs> the only thing I know I need that they're not going to give me enough of ever in anything yeah. that, requ- that would require it is sour cream. That's the only thing they're chintzy on when you need like an additional thing. So this like is- a lot of tahini from my moons. I do like a lot of tahini from my moons. Listen, I get it. I'm again, I'm a sauce guy. So you guys called this deli, ordered double meat. I get it. Got a roast beef and cheese. <laughs> roast beef and cheese, and what else? Um, an Italian. Nice. It's a good order. Fantastic order. What did and you- we had baked Cheetos. Christine okay. got the four empanadas, said I'll have a bite. We ordered from three different places last it's night. It's great. It's cheap meal. Oh, cheap meal, yeah. Listen, I get it. But there was... What I did... DeRosa is- staying with us, too. So DeRosa oh, jumped fun. in the fun. Oh, yeah. And DeRosa, he, you know, he'll be on later today. He is a fun eater. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. He goes for it. He really does go for it. He was uh, right there next to us. He got... Actually, but he only ate half of his sandwich, I think. But he ordered an Italian sandwich, too. But he wanted fries and mozzarella sticks we got those from the diner across the street you guys really fatted out hard i still don't i don't i'm telling you i don't know if i there there was probably many days this week where i ate with exaggeration 500 calories a day that's good for you man yeah so go hard no so we went hard in this meal for sure yeah so we get that and the baked cheetos that's the other thing and we had uh entomans donuts for later whole whole dozen uh, no, was it two, pack of eight. four, six, eight? Yeah, yeah. But then we bought an extra pack of little mini donuts because obviously we were going to need those too. Yeah, I mean, I took down, that was I took down half a Halloween bag of Kit Kats yesterday. That was, <laughs> that was a ninety percent Christine call, by the way. The extra discriminating. Donuts. She was worried there wasn't going to be enough chocolate donut. Get it? And yeah. by the way, the Enemans are great. That's to open up with the yellow in the middle, right? Yeah, yeah. And the way they break open, oh, it's the way they. Fuck! I can eat some Enemans donuts <laughs> right now. Yeah, right. Should have brought the extra. We should have brought the extra. They go in the garbage. Um, I'm figuring my my oh, food pussy. When we got to Christine, I think uh, finger blasted the last donut piece into her mouth. Yeah. And then excused herself, not even, just kind of walked off to the bathroom for one of her 78 pisses <laughs> no, a night. It was, like, it was a few minutes. It was like we finished, we ate all the food <laughs> and then finished the two donuts and then we sat there. We sat there for a little bit. Not long, because when you got up, I remember thinking to myself, is this bitch getting more Cheetos? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> That's, did you just get up to go shit? No, I just immediately was like, I'm going to throw up. Oh, God. I haven't been there since I drank. I, it, I, Dan, I, I really had either. to make her. I had to, I don't know. I had to for, not make her, but I had to talk her into not, I mean, finishing the last bite of empanada and whatever into eating the donuts immediately. She was like, you want to do the donuts now? I'm like, let's just chill for a few. Let's I'm a few an more. addict. Were you like, a, were you like an excited dog when they eat their dinners too fast? Yeah. And then like, Bleh! and you're like, God damn it. It's like, I don't want to wait to you? get full. <sighs> I don't think my thing's healthy Patches, either. Yeah. I said to Christine yesterday, I go, really what I love mm-hmm. uh, on like a day, when we, and especially now we're doing a cheap meal, it's not like the whole day of just like onslaught. Oh, mine's an all day thing. Um, we we didn't do great yesterday all day, but it was the only day we ever did. But we didn't go fuck. We, God, had, I, we had eggs. We had safe, rye toast God. with our eggs in the yeah. morning. Yeah, it's a safe space. It's fine. No, no, I'm just saying my point being we didn't go like hard. Normally on the cheat day, we would do like bagels and whatever in the morning and then shit. Yeah, yeah. Breakfast sandwich and a uh, waffle like I did. Yeah. <laughs> Got right home from the airport. Fucking went down to business. Exactly. I love yeah. a good waffle. Oh, exactly. I have homemade. I have Vermont maple syrup that I've had since I worked at Vermont Comedy Club that I bought at a fucking... Farmer's market. That's phenomenal. <laughs> stupid. It's so stupid it got held back a grade. <laughs> <laughs> well, I say that I, what I revel in too much yeah. is the leading up to. Yeah, you like, like the edge. Once we, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> you're right. You're like the food once edge. it's ordered even, I'm like, oh, uh, there's a little bit of a depression there of just kind of like, oh, now it's, like, you, it's on its a, way. And then are when you you're eating f- it, you're like, wow, it's going to be all over soon. Uh, so do you food cuck? Do you make Christine <laughs> eat it in front of you? And then you go, can I, can I just have a bite while you're having a bite? I just want to have a little bite. Neither of us oh. want to finish first. Oh, man. Here's the thing. I just kept... I don't give a shit about that. That's I not, just not true. I kept pulling the trigger. So I had a waffle breakfast sandwich. Dan St. Germain came over to watch fucking New Japan before WrestleMania. 
we ordered wings right when the f- WrestleMania started, like a lot of wings. And then uh, James Madden brought over like chips, dip. Uh, St. Germain brought over a whole dozen donuts. It was just silliness. It was so uncomfortable. I was so uncomfortably full. I bet. It was probably for like a lot of the event. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I learned how to sit right in a, in a desk chair where I could like angle my stomach where it didn't hurt. <laughs> You said a desk chair. Yeah. Not even your own couch because I gave that to your belly was hurting too much. No, I gave it to company. That's fair. And a desk chair is great because you, f- you, know, you can get a little lean back. Yeah. And p- <laughs> what were you wearing? <laughs> what pants were you going with? Oh, dude, I went with, my, uh, I went with sweatpants. Yeah. I'm not an asshole. It's yeah. an eating day. I was sweatpants by the time we ate. People were, people, I kept disappearing to eat the ice cream out of the freezer. <laughs> not wanting to share. No, hell no. That's a personal pint of ice cream. So I just kept going and shoveling <laughs> bites. And James Matter and I popped my head around. He goes, dude, I've, he, he watched me eat as I was watching TV. And he was like, you looked so happy. I was like, yeah, that's the happiest I've been all, in a long time. <laughs> just watching TV, eating ice cream. I'm a happy boy. Uh, but so, Christine, you, you threw up. Yeah, and it wasn't like I was sitting there for a minute being like like, sh- like not feeling good kind of going like do I need to make myself throw up yep. but it wasn't even that it was like I got to the bathroom and it it was like I leaned over and, and it, it just was, was just there. like it just happened I did that <laughs> with- it must have been grotesque <laughs> yeah, it was very there fresh. it is right there <laughs> when it just when you want to throw up so gross when you, you want- ate some hoagie too <laughs> you went for it when you throw up like that though and it's it's the throwing up is is actually the best part of the entire thing because yeah. you're like you're sitting there and you're like I feel like shit I'm sweating and you're like fuck it I'm just gonna walk to the bathroom and then the second you're like Bleh! and it's all out of you you're like thank you thank you I right, wish bummer. I could have stayed and thrown up for an hour because I still felt like I was too full even after throwing up I was gonna up. say the bummer of that to me is I'm like oh fucking Christine like I wanna be bulimic on Sundays <laughs> I wanna <laughs> eat Bulim- it all make it go away I was very Bulim- excited what's the medical count? problem with doing that oh dude it's terrible it's no just- no no just Sunday. Oh. What's the thing of negating your entire cheat meal? I mean, I think it's pretty bad it's just to have your stomach acid go up through your esophagus. Oh, uh, once a week? <laughs> it's barely acid in it. It's all in the sandwich. I, mean, I don't know if I can back bulimia on this show. I, I, yeah. Listen, I'm going to say, Christine, yeah, look you're it up. Not eating. You did that self-control, but bulimia? I can't, I can't back that. No, I mean, yes, only a real fucking awesome person can pull off anorexia because you, you know, have that kind of discipline but <laughs> that's not me there was a blatant anorexic girl at my gym today just in spin in the spin room What's by herself mean? like she was blatantly anorexic like she had an anorexic body she walked around she and said goes, i don't yeah. eat i don't think you know what blatant <laughs> means yeah, blatant means in your face she wasn't walking around going guess last time i had a meal three days ago it my felt time. in look at my these, face look my biceps are the same as my wrists oh look at me i could fit through the crack in that door oh lou you son of a bitch that's so mean that is mean come on dude america's favorite anorexic <laughs> sweetheart it was like one of these bodies let me see fuckable like that yeah she's fine Oh, Not like no. that. Oh, God. But it, oh. I, it was just like, at oh. what point is there a responsibility Christine, what are you trying to, do? You trying to, show to me, stop that? Are you trying to show me what you would look, if you looked like how I would love you more? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> she goes, yeah, I know you like a bony. Oh, my dream girl right there. Dude, look at the girl all the way to the right. That was no. her bef- at the Hell beginning? yeah. Or is that right. her fixed? No, that's when she was a big, fat pig. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you threw up. And then, did you get right back to it? No. I did like, not eat more after I threw up, and I'm almost surprised by that. You know how gross it is? Christine pulls her underwear up, and then her body just holds the underwear on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want her to be able to slither out of it. I would really? have to put a belt on your underwear. <laughs> oh, God. Jay goes, hey, is this the year you go full Schindler's List for me? <laughs> they, uh, I, the only time I've thrown up and gotten right back to anything was drinking. And it was at Playwrights. I was drinking with like a bunch of comics. Uh, I did a shot with Michael Che. I walked downstairs, walked into the bathroom, threw up, and turned around and went back upstairs and ordered another beer. But that makes sense. Sometimes I just went really? like, yeah! and just the turned around and was like, "What's up?" <laughs> I came back upstairs like, you "No, I'm good." Oh, out. sorry. It's like, "Why are your eyes tearing?" Don't worry about it. I'm good. What's up? Can you get a blood light? shot? It goes, yeah. Your blood shot. What's up, dude? I used to get. Uh, I used to pop the blood when I drank. I'd throw up so much that my blood vessels in my eyes would like they would all pop. So it looked like I was wearing like red makeup above my <laughs> eyelid. That's fucking hilarious. Did you throw up every night you drank? Mm, I definitely threw up once a week. 
and it always threw up making this noise. <laughs> yeah, dude, me too. <laughs> All right, we both got to keep in mind to do this. Listen, I should have done this recently. Smoke a cigarette. I should have done this recently because I God, I, it was garbage. I drank to, uh, Wednesday night because I'm not used to eating this little. Yeah, I just drank what I would drink at Legion of Skanks normally. Bad came idea. home, and I mean, Christine will tell you, I came home. Well, she doesn't know this part, but I told her, like my hallway going to my front door. Yeah. In my building was like I mean I was just ping pong everything shy of just rolling. <laughs> Wait, so you're doing the you're doing it. the aha uh, take yeah, on me. Yeah, yeah. Da, 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 Let me da, da, out of this crazy da, da, comic da, 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 strip da, da, da. called you were, life. You were black and white, and two guys in motorcycle helmets were chasing you. to me. I'll be Christine. Christine was. Christine was reading your story in the Moonstruck Diner <laughs> as he was going, as you were too hammered walking down the hallway. In a day or two. Oh, man. Um, yeah, I ping pong down the whole hallway and got inside and just went. I walked in. I even saw Christine had like dinner on plates already, and I was just like, I don't feel good. No, uh, and uh, but I should have that night because it was mostly dry heath. But I should have. We have to keep presence of mind to vo- voice memo ourselves next to either one of us, me or you. Dude, next time we throw, I'm on it. I promise you, I'm on it. Because by the way, my dry heaves, I do go. So funny being a big guy with I think like a pretty deep voice. Yeah. That I get in the bathroom, I just go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the, and you know I'm not a braggart. Uh, one of the one <laughs> I've of, hit notes that have shattered glasses. You no, know, I always say the most. I don't even plan to say it. Just the the most random shit that when roommates have thrown heard me throw up, they're like, "What did you?" Because I'll say different stuff, or I'll just go over there. <laughs> <laughs> or after I puke, I go, "That'll about do it." <laughs> stupid shit where I don't mean to say it, but it's always like. I make myself laugh because I'm like, where the fuck did that? I'm all sweaty and just like, <sighs> dude, when I got that norovirus, you go, dude, the spinning, the <laughs> and then the cursing in between spinning, we go, Tah, what the fuck? Holy shit, get out of me. <laughs> oh, man, when I got that norovirus, when I was supposed to go to Royal Rumble and I just fucking puked all day Sunday, that was the noises. I, were, I was so glad Mike wasn't home. He was out of town because I was like lifting my body up, grabbing the toilet. That's how intense my my vomiting was. Yeah. And then it's just like, yeah, yeah, man. What the fuck? Sounds like it sounds like you just you just started to get exercised by a priest. Spiritus sanctus sanctimonium and diablo in the serial non dia. Christine, are you looking up uh, what the medical drawbacks are of puking once a week? Yeah, there's nothing on once a week bulimia. Yes. Oh, <laughs> Jay, you got your new fucking. Uh, body. I don't have to be bulimic the rest of the week. I've thrown up so many times in my life, like to an amount that like no normal person will ever even get to in their entire life. Yeah. That I don't know how I. I'm just not don't have harmful stomach problems. Oh, I mean, it got to the point where with my drinking, where it was second nature. Yeah, you just, I was like, you drink, never, you throw up. What you said, where you eat, where you ate very little, reminded me when I used to drink, mm. I would get done waiting tables. So we'd have staff meal at like 3.30, mm-hmm. 4 p.m. So whatever they put out for the restaurant, it was always like rice and shitty chicken and like all this stuff. And then I would eat, I would, that was my lunch and dinner sometimes. So I'd eat that fast and then work until five, get done, go home, shower, put on different clothes, and then go out to do spots in the city. The second I got to a comedy club, I started drinking. Yeah. So a lot of times I didn't eat. So I'd just fucking go right to work. And then I would drink all night until I was too drunk. And then I'd come home and eat like fast and then just be like, (laughs) it was, oh man. Well, I would throw up and then eat. (laughs) That was my big, because I was like, oh, let me get all the excess booze out of my body and then put some food in here so I don't feel like such shit tomorrow morning. But I don't know how it took me 10 years to quit. Yeah, (laughs) you do. You get really good. One of the the, uh, positives of alcoholism, you get very comfortable and good at throwing up. And it becomes pretty easy to the point that I got the flu. I started getting the flu and I went on uh, Opie and Anthony when they were still, it was still Opie and Anthony and they gave me this like spicy juice mm-hmm. and I had the flu. Like I felt like I was going to throw up all morning and like, no, just take a, like take a quick chug of that. See if it's good. And I drank it. It was like, I'm going to throw up. And I just like walked and they sent Sam 
Roberts with me to like videotape me throwing up, and I was it was so pinpoint precision that I just walked in with ah! just threw up. I was like, ah! 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 I'm good. And then Sam comes in. He's like, Did you throw up? I'm like, It's already done, dude. It's That's already that fast. It was that fast. And I was like, And this has probably been that was probably like a six months after I quit drinking, like a year. And immediately I was like, Still got it. <laughs> still got it. Still got Kids that still good got stuff. It. I had that weird one in Staten Island. Where we I, we just drank a lot of beer and we're walking down the street oh, the fr- and I like turned f- over my shoulder, projectile vomited and like turned back and kept walking. <laughs> yeah, you got the froth pukes. All right, Christine, I get it. I guess everyone at home that was probably the cum shot right there. Yeah. So oh. let's take our first break and we'll come back. We have some fun guests coming in today. I want to talk WrestleMania when we come back. Um, and Connor and maybe a little Connor McGregor. It's the bonfire. And now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Oh, that's the sweet flautist, Ian Anderson, Jethro Tull. It's the bonfire, Comedy Central Radio, Series X and 95, Big J Okerson, Dan Soder. Dan Soder, of course, is the flautist of the bonfire. He's the, fl- he's the bonfire's flautist. <laughs> Dan Soder, of course, is going to be at the Rhode Island Comedy Connection. April 27th and 28th. And the Loft Comedy Club in Chicopee, Massachusetts on April 29th. After that, you can catch him at the Comedy Mix in Vancouver. Nice. Going back to the Vancouver. Uh, Comedy Mix in Vancouver. That's May 3rd through May 5th. For tickets and all their tour dates, visit dansoder.com. And don't forget, Season 3 of Billions airing Sundays at 10 p.m. on Showtime. Mm. Big J. Okerson, or as I call the stand up bass of the bonfire. And that's just coming from a flu- flutist. Oh, there it is. Big J. Okerson going to be at Hilarities in Cleveland April 26th, all the way through the 28th. After that, he's going to be headlining in Caroline's, right smack dab in the middle of it all, Times Square. May 3rd through the 6th. Tickets and other tour dates. BigJComedy.com Lou, you were like uh, P. Diddy there. <laughs> Jazz the comedy. Woodwind. Welcome to the Woodwind Tour. <laughs> <laughs> Flute, brass, or woodwind? Jacob, your thoughts? I know you love classical. I know you're a chamber music guy. <laughs> yeah, chamber music batak. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let me put on my chamber music. Hold the fuck on. Do you that. know if is a flute a woodwind or a brass? I would say it's a woodwind instrument. Yeah, is, is there a reed in a flute? Sure. That's the whole thing, right? I, dude, I don't know shit. I wanted to play the cello when I was young, and my mom was like, you can't afford that shit. Oh, I thought she was going to be like, nah, my son's not gay. <laughs> she goes, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. You also want to suck dicks? I'm sorry. You play football. You take running backs to the ground. Mama won't play a cello. Mom, <laughs> um, I've decided these supple wrists need to play a cello. I want to hold a bow, Mom. and I want to rip a cello solo. Mom, I'm nine. <laughs> I, I love three things. Joe Montana, Hulk Hogan, and cello. <laughs> Marlboro Reds. I can't wait to start smoking in three years. I'm nine. <laughs> Man, dude, yeah, that, I told that. Yeah, someone made a gift about a gif about that with uh, me smoking cigarettes when I was watching Doogie Hauser when I was like, when I was like twelve, <laughs> yeah. and coming inside to play with my wrestling toys, but I was all still smoking cigarettes. Oh, also, real quick, still taking submissions for the guess what's playing in the background while they're fucking. Yeah, but, but because, the problem we're having with some of them. Good. Oh, uh, you can say what we're gonna have the problem with, and then I'll promote where we're doing it. Yes, but we are having uh, a bit of a issue with some of them. One, some people didn't send the answer along. Uh, Jacob is the only person who'll be seeing the answer, so uh, you don't have to worry about that. But we sometimes he doesn't know, so we'll never know what the right answer is. Ah, uh, dude, one of my favorite moments working on the show. And wait, and also the the, the music uh, or the I'm uh, sorry, the the television volume has to be. You got to find a nice, happy medium of at least letting us understand what is playing on the television. Yeah, and also making wild fuck noises. I mean, it seems to be the entire point. Some people, uh, Some you can't play this game with your dead lay chick or dude. <laughs> Sometimes you only hear the TV. Only it's the most oh, quiet oh, fucking. Oh, weird. <laughs> you guys are just banging through your noses. You're like. <laughs> Oh my god, oh my god, I'm about to finish. Where do you want it? I don't care. <sighs> okay, here it comes. 
I don't care. Here comes. Okay. okay. Is Cheers Boy. loud enough? Was Cheers loud enough for your radio show? Boy. Is Cheers loud enough? All right, babe, don't complain. They're just playing a game. Are you still I'm going? I'm sorry. I'm going to give you a rag. Are you still going? No, I'm finished. Okay, Tom. Get out of me. <laughs> uh, Get out of me. <laughs> yeah, because we're going to be playing that game live, live at the Moon Tower Comedy Festival. Uh, we will not be showing. A vi- we want the video ones for also audio. because, but the vi- you could always send video ones because we will play the game in studio. But Dude, the ones we're going to use for Moon Tower let me can just always be audio. Oh, I know, I saw it, but you didn't see what I saw. I did. No, because I'm, I, you weren't there. I know, but I I, I, I saw it today. No, I know, but you got to let me tell you what I saw. <laughs> okay. I walked into the <laughs> office, and I was trying to take a nap, because we did a pre-record, and uh. then I went and did Sam Roberts' r- wrestling podcast, <laughs> and I come back in the studio, and I'm going to take a nap on the couch in the comedy office, and Lou Witzke, who is a fucking saint mm-hmm. for this show, the amount of work that he does, all the entire crew does a lot of work. DJ Lou, DJ Dead Rat. DJ Dead Rat is watching a submission to what are they watching while they fuck and it is two dudes pounding each other <laughs> missionary style where i just keep looking at the screen and you just see ball bag and then this guy just fucking the shit out of his boyfriend or lover i don't know if they're committed yeah gamer's giving the biz pretty good but lou's just sitting there with an ear with an earphone to his ear looking out the window and just right to his side is just just two dudes banging. I mean, really fucking like there's no tomorrow. Oh, yeah, he's really what clowning did, into it. But I'll tell you what. Lou Witzke, didn't he say in the email that he says he rips... What's the name of the video? His name of his email is something like uh, Airwolf Lariat. Airwolf Lariat? Because <laughs> they're listening to... I mean, I don't know if we're going to blow it. We're going to play it. Oh, no, no, no. Well. But then, actually, the title of the email was Ripping Holes. Ripping Holes. That's what I was looking for. That was the name of the email was Ripping Holes. And Lou just... At, he just has to sit there in his afternoon, and part of his job is to watch two dudes just bang it out to Airwolf, a TV show that Jacob liked. Uh, by the way, when I watched the video myself today, and I saw the guy completely pull out, yeah, I did think to myself, weirdly, nah, you, you could probably handle that. <laughs> oh, you, that's what you thought to yourself? I w- he didn't pull it out, and I was like, how does a man take a dick that huge up his shitter? Mm-hmm. When this guy pulled out, I was like, yeah, I mean, that's probably the kind of dick. I, can't, I assume it's the size of dick you pick Someone your that's, asshole. Someone that's watched the video, I'll tell you what. What he, ma- he lacks in size, he makes up for in fight. Oh, no. Right? I mean, yeah, he goes. That is, that's the old No Fear t-shirt. It's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. And that guy's got a lot of fight in his dog. I think at the end, he finishes inside. So oh, yeah, it's a cream no, pie. There's no reward. <laughs> it's an in your butt cream pie there. If he was a diehard fan, <laughs> it's a fucking butt cream pie. It's a butt pie. If he was a real fan, he would have uh, had the other guy then flip over on all fours and fire the jizz out of his butt, and that's what should be called an airwolf lariat. Or he goes, <laughs> Oh, there it is. Yowzer. Yeah, Jay it goes like this. Oh, you know what? I'll be honest. On this screen, now it looks like it would hurt. Yeah, dude. I just love that the ball bag just comes resting back. And By the way, that guy's nutsack scene goes all the way under his <laughs> asshole. <laughs> his nutsack gets weird. It looks like a it looks like a Sharpay face. He must be cold in that house. Yeah. His nuts are trying to stay warm he attached must, to his body. He keeps it at 63. <laughs> That's a 63. Uh, completely shaved. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, uh, you don't want to. You don't yowzers. Can you imagine the pain of hairs getting pu- stuffed into your own butthole? I, I would mean, never get past imagining. Um, uh, get past the part of imagining the pain of a man's dick plowing you in the shitter over and over. And then with the irritation, now add hairs. hairs? No, thank you, Jacob. I would never have gay sex behind your back either. Thanks, Jacob. Do me a favor, Jacob. If you're going to say something stupid, just don't say anything. <laughs> no. I'm kind of ruining it right now. Uh, hey, man, way to really kill my boner, literally and figuratively. Those ass cheeks. I know. I know. <laughs> you're, right. you're right about that. You've always been right about that. So send more submissions to the bonfire at SiriusXM. Uh, video uh, or audio as long as... Look, we appreciate video more, but audio is also great. And make sure that uh, well, we can hear what's playing prominently in the background. And if you're not a noisy fucker, still waiting for this masturbation uh, video from the girl who said she's going to be loud and whatever. I don't mean to put ideas in people's Chelsea heads. Chelsea something? But if someone does it to tattletale on the gang... 
that will make me laugh. Oh, man, that'd be really great. If someone bangs it out to Tattletail in the gang. Hey, you guys like form-fitted leather jackets? Uh, me too. I'm Tattletail in the gang. <laughs> Crossword puzzles should be done in pen. <laughs> I'm, what are you, a grandmother? Uh, I'm Tattletail in the gang. <laughs> hey, it's me, Tattletail. Here with you, the gang. You know what's better than unsweetened iced tea? Less ice. <laughs> Nothing. More tea. Warm, <laughs> unflavored iced tea. Uh, good news, by the way. Christine looked it up, and I just kind of thumbed it, but I'm pretty sure it says I can be bulimic on Sundays. Cool! Um, guys, get ready for super sexy so Jack. moving forward with that plan. So uh, by next Monday, is- you guys will have a great uh, audio of me throwing up. Yeah! And then we can- I can't wait for fucking teeth rot, Jay, in seven months when all that stomach acid eats through all your teeth. All right, baby. That's what I get. It. You're angry. You're mad. Don't do this. Yeah, shut up. I get it. You're upset, dude. You don't have to fucking freak out, bro. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Jacob brought over cake to your what? I was gonna ask Soder if he has terrible teeth. Shut up. Do you? No, I went to the dentist a month ago. I didn't have a fucking cavity, which makes me think they're fucking lying because it's never happened. I just I'm like, how do I still have teeth in my mouth? I don't know, but I, I puked a lot because I don't hit you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Believe me, if Body I shots. did, if I did hit you, there'd be not a tooth left. Oh, dude! <laughs> might... I start aiming for the spot. She goes, "I still got one." Uh, she goes, "That's, that's she goes, my still got one molar hanging in there." It's a good one. That's my ripping tooth. <laughs> that's how I rip the meat off the bone. <laughs> I go, Jay. I, I got to step in on this abuse. Christine is. Uh, she looks like a fucking hole in a mini golf. <laughs> Course. I can't. Jay just knocked out my Yankers last night for acting a fool. Yeah, well, the front of her mouth looks like a putt putt course. <laughs> if you get it all the way through, you get the 18. You get to play the 18th hole. You get a free round of golf. Uh, yeah, dude, I watched fucking WrestleMania yesterday. Was it awesome? Uh, it was a good mania. Give it was good. Highlights. It was Ronda Rousey. Uh, dude, I'll say this: I was trashing her, and I think she's still god awful on the mic. But she uh, she did really great yesterday. It, it, like, like fighting a man, yeah. I mean, yeah, she fought Triple H and and uh, Stephanie. She did most of her moves against Stephanie McMahon, but also uh, Stephanie McMahon did a good job. It what was just. Uh, did you call that a fight? What just happened there? No, it's wrestling. It's a choreographed dance. Boom! Look at that. That looked good. So essentially, you're saying you like dancing with the stars? Yeah, goddamn right. I watch it with my nana stars. all the time. You know, Alfonso Ribeiro won it. Pirouette, bam. <laughs> um, but no wrestling. The part that I was very stoned, very full, and kind of tired for was Braun Strowman was supposed to announce who his tag team partner was, and it had been a mystery. What was the main event? The main event was uh, Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. Uh, Brock Lesnar opened up Roman Reigns' forehead, as they call it in the wrestling business, the hard way, with an elbow across his head. So he was gushing blood, like, for real. like Oh, no no razor blades. But don't don't show that to Jay yet, because I want to set it up. The the ra- No razor blades. They didn't blade it. That's blading. That's where you cut, like, a small line across your forehead. This was like, Brock Lesnar took his gloves off, and the last time he did that was SummerSlam, where he opened up Randy Orton. And Randy Orton actually had to get staples on his head. This time, he opened up uh, Roman Reigns with punches. And I think he, like, you know, I think he was aiming for, like, right here where his hairline is. But, dude, right, he hit him with one, and you just saw a gash go across his head. And it started coming down. You know those guys, when they start running around and more, the blood starts pumping? So Roman Reigns, at one point, there's a picture online of his face just covered in blood. He was just covered in blood. Great main event? It was... Uh, Dude, WrestleMania is too long. They got to cut it back down to like three or four hours. That shit's fucking way too long. How long I'm a wrestling. It? it was seven hours. Jesus. But some of it's seven online, hours. right? It's like a, it's like the UFC no. events, right? Uh, well, it started. It was five hours without the the pre show. Pre show was five to seven. Holy it shit! Went five to midnight. There it is. That's what Roman Reigns looked like. So he opened him up on the top of his head. I know. Like, isn't that guy from the singing to a girl with a teacup commercial? <laughs> you ever see that? No. You haven't seen so. Roman Reigns teacup commercial? No. I'm not Come a Roman on. Reigns guy. I don't like Roman Reigns. I, don't I know, but I don't know anything about him other than he's a wrestler and he's in this teacup commercial. Christine, you got to find that. I mean, come on. Is this it? Yeah. Here is my handle and here is my spell. When I get all steamed up, then I shout. Tip, Tip me over and pour me, me out. Oh. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact. Wouldn't it be funny if you just see like the, the, in that, that video, there's a male lady looking through the window at that happening? What if the male lady uh, runs away and just immediately goes reports him? Like, yeah, I think he's trying to hook up with this chick. Either he's got a sex child slave, or he hits his child. <laughs> Either way. Hi, I work the uh, beat over on the east side of town, and um, I was at a man's house. He's tattooed. Samoan. Looks very aggressive. <laughs> it looks like he might be... In the, um, 
No, but the uh, the thing I wanted to talk to you about, the thing that made me really laugh was, were you there for this, Jacob, or had you left already with the tight team title match? I didn't see that. Oh, dude, this was Were great. you still wearing just an apron Actually, and a Japanese thong underwear guy. and serving everybody coffee cake? <laughs> oh, yeah, you left after... Uh, they looked like they'd been there... <laughs> you know, I, mean, like, I brought hours. my roller skates in case you guys wanted me to do like a sexy roller skate the cake to you. Today. I could do that. I could also be a nurse. Do you guys want this to be a nurse cake? <laughs> he, uh, they he had could, all carb crashed. I mean, we crashed, dude. We were all like, there was like eight of us, and we were just anybody like, sleep over? Or no, or everyone left, left right at the end because it was so fucking long that we were done. We feel like we accomplished something. Everyone was like, "Ah, hey, we sat through all that, huh?" He left after Nakamura Styles. Which was going to be my favorite match, but the crowd was fucking tired. Like in could, the actual, audience. in the I mean, dude, in the arena, you got to think it's New Orleans. We were talking about this, like, dude, they were drunk <laughs> at like six p.m. going in, being like WrestleMania, and by eleven thirty p.m., they're like, dude, I'm hammered. I'm hammered, and I gotta sit down. It's a long event. Man. So this is why this makes it great because this is what I kept making fun of Braun Strowman, who's a monster. He's a giant. He's like you know he's the one that lifted the truck over. He like does like crazy strength stuff like that. He's a former strong. He's man. the one that destroyed the uh, the whole ring collapse. On yes, him. when he uh, when he suplexed Big Show. So he keeps saying I'm going to take on uh, the the uh, tag team for the titles for the tag team championships and he keeps saying my, my partner's going to be a mystery my partner's a mystery he doesn't announce it they come in the, the tag team champions come in Braun Strowman comes in by himself gets the mic and he's like you want to know who my partner is it's you or you or you and he just starts screaming out to the audience and everyone's like what the fuck is he talking about dude he goes and were you the- high enough that you were like me dude that was <laughs> immediately i was like i would we were all talking about how cool it would be if you got picked to be braun Strowman's tag team partner because the whole point was this, he was like the whole point is he's like i'm gonna kick these guys ass someone gets to be a tag team champion for no reason other than is that my fee from yeah. billions is he the tag team title let me tell you something bobby axelrod <laughs> you've been keeping me under your thumb for over three seasons but now i got braun Strowman and our new manager taylor mason <laughs> Oh, all right. Uh, anyways, Braun Strowman picked this 10-year-old kid and was like, Legitimately. What? Dude, this kid was so scared <laughs> and also looked like he didn't want to be there that it was the funniest thing in the world. His name was Nicholas. And he goes, what's your name? And he goes, Nicholas? Dude, look at it. The kid can't even lift the belt. Ow! I have cystic fibrosis. <laughs> Nicholas. Yeah, we kept uh, dance. Dan St. Germain had a great tweet where he goes, this is all fun until we find out. Uh, here it is. There is, especially you two, huh? And that's why I waited till I got to New Orleans on the grandest stage of them all to tell you who it is. Dan Soder. Hey! <laughs> Yay! Oh! And it's not one person in the back. You have food in your mouth? You're like, why are you there, Braun Strowman? But Braun Strowman, I can't fly down there <laughs> yeah, tomorrow. I'm, I'm wearing sweatpants, Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman, I'm wearing my Bullet Club sweatpants. My costume didn't get here yet. <laughs> Am I supposed to wear camo pants like he's got? <laughs> it's one of you! They can't do or this! One of you. They can do it, Jacob. Or it's one of you! So show him go in the audience. So he goes in the audience, right? And he kind of like... Does he ever go, not you, though? <laughs> Dude, he does, <laughs> he does kind of like walk around and look at people and like walk away. I'm looking for a tag team partner. Is it tag no. Team Dude, it's great. This, this kid, guy's a pussy. Uh, this, this chick sucks. This little fat kid keeps following him around. This kid right there. Take a picture of that. Pause it. Oh, my God. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, the little fat kid keeps following around. And then this like dude who looks like a club promoter, he just keeps being like, hey, right. And, and then you see security take him away. Like, watch this little kid. Yeah. He's like, Bronk, can, can I be your tag team partner? No? Okay, you're going to walk away? I already got my name. It's, hey, everyone. I'm the asthmatic. I'm the butter. Ball. It's Braun Strowman and the Butterball. Little Butterball. You ready to go bowling? And he just throws him at everybody. Oh, man. So watch him pick this kid who looks... Definitely has to be. I want to find out who and this kid is. And the little fat is behind me. Goes. I was behind you the whole time. But I understand. I get it. You want a skinny, fuckable kid? <laughs> I'm just getting ready for the rest of my life. <laughs> Disappointments and what have you. No, I guess you really taught me a life lesson here tonight, Braun. <laughs> um. Yep. The bar is smart. 
They'll tell the referee to ring the bell. So go forward a little bit until he finds the kid. Uh, there it is. Yeah, still doesn't have him. Yeah, there he is. Is that a boy? That's so. So at first you think it, it's a little girl because it's it has long hair. Uh, the boy has long hair, and and he calls I, I him. Don't, I, I, please, they, them, or there. Okay. Well, <laughs> what happens is is Braun Strowman calls him buddy, pretty quick to the uh, point, like quicker than you would be like. He has to know this kid. Yeah. In order to be like Buddy. Okay. Because I mean, we are all uncomfortable when he walks up and he goes, what's up, Buddy? And you go, there's a chance I might be a little girl. Yeah. And then she goes, I'm not a Buddy. <laughs> I think there's insurances. I feel like this was probably also set up. Yeah. Say no. No, this is 100% set up, dude. Oh, okay. Because watch. The, I mean, dude, the kid gets... I don't know if we have the clip, but the kid gets in the ring at one point, and I was like, if Cesaro just fucking smashed this kid, uh, do you have him getting in the ring? Yep. Appetory. This is great. It's up look, how, look at the kid is petrified. This is nuts. Look, he doesn't know how to get in the ring. How do He's I trying to figure out just how to get in the ring. Get in there. Oh, yes, sir. Way to pick a kid that looks like a, a future school shooter. Yeah, what so the like, fuck is this? Listen, let's hope this saves some lives in about five to six years. I'm going to give him a tag team championship. Me, my tag Or it's going to give him the confidence partner. to do it. I yeah. can't What's be stopped. Name, young man? Nicholas. Give it up for Nicholas! <laughs> Nicholas, you just signed up for an extreme rules match. He just gets a shot with a chair. <sighs> By the way, Nicholas's parents definitely, because of this kid's haircut, at his age, yeah, certainly are yeah. the kind of white garbage that would do whatever and put their kid in the ring with a bunch of us. They go like this. <laughs> He'll take a shot. He, <laughs> hell, his daddy does it to him every day. <laughs> he goes, he don't even pull it. He can. He can. I'm not joking. We power bombed him through a table last week. <laughs> if you want to split them, you can split them open, oh. but. It's got to be stitchable. I got to meet Triple H. <laughs> it's just some white trash bartering. You can break his nose. You can break a wrist. Uh, small limbs are okay. Nothing's going to keep him out of school. That's my time. I'll tell you this right now. Y'all can really fuck him up. <laughs> if, and this is a big if, y'all get stone cold to leave our voicemail. <laughs> I, want, I want stone cold to say what? Leave your name. What? After the beep, what? <laughs> now, Nicholas, I mean, I signed papers right over to you right now. You want to fight him? You could work that some bitch over for the next four hours if you want oh to. All I ask Do you know- is that you have Hulk Hogan drive to my house in Bigfoot the monster truck and say hi on my birthday once a year for the next five years. And then, I mean, you can just keep Nicholas. I change, <laughs> I'm going to change his room into an entertainment room. He doesn't talk. He'll let you do whatever you want. He thinks it's his fault. It's very easy to make him think I it's mean, his fault. This kid's gullible. It's like he, <laughs> This kid's gullible, can take a shot. <laughs> it's like he was got born a, to be a wrestler. Got his great granddaddy's chin. I mean, we call him Gumby around the house because we <laughs> kick him down the stairs, and that some bitch just pops right <laughs> Mr. back. Mr. <up>. Bill, <laughs> we call him Mr. Bill. I mean, you're gonna have to wrecking ball this kid into the side of a building. Got, you want to take him out? He's like Terminator. Watch, watch. My husband will hit him real quick. Watch. Do the honey. We're gonna play Bill. Do it. Oh no! <laughs> back up. Hey, Tech, I go play with my friends. He goes, Hang on one second, Nicholas. Gotta do this one more time. He. Damn! Lariat! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dad, can I go play now? Yeah. Yep. Yes, son, go play. So, He's good. So Braun Strowman picks Nicholas, and he goes in, and uh, there it is right here. Hot tag. Nicholas is legal! Nicholas is legal! Oh, she sure is. Oh, this kid's parents! What's yeah. he gonna do? <laughs> Cesaro, Swiss Superman. The referee looks scared to death. It looks like a lawsuit way to hell. Oh, thank, thank God. <laughs> hey. Strowman oh, kisses it. the match. Here it comes. Power slam. Look at the power. Oh, with a power slam. Cover. I know a lot of the standards that you want is that you want to believe. But uh, Mike in Connecticut just wanted to let you know that that kid is the referee's son. Okay, yeah, we, I figured he was connected to somebody. I didn't think... I, I never said that I thought it was just a random kid. 
I know, but you want it to be just a random kid. Yeah, of course. Because I do. you, I and, want Braun Strowman to be a monster among men. Because all you and your wrestling friends had an hour conversation about how cool it would be if he picked you. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Because, and then I would have got up there when I was a kid. Now I'll tell you, as a kid, I wasn't super strong, but you know what I was? Wiry, and I had a will to win. Dude, how cool and would it be that to go? Win. I thought how cool it would be to go to school with that belt over your shoulder. You're like, <laughs> just tell everybody you're one. He goes, yeah. Like fight me after school. He goes, I would, but illegally I can't unless my partner's here. He goes, uh, I'm really sorry that I have to do this but I have to defend my titles tonight so I have to leave school a little early <laughs> oh you don't think so maybe my tag team partner can sign me out I mean yeah that's I mean this is this is where wrestling fans get annoyed because it's like yeah, I figured it wasn't a real random little kid it's I would have just accepted it was a kid it. you would have just accepted it yeah See, I mean, yeah. But then I would. But then, like, wait, no, who, but, who's but, but you're, comp- you're you're doing it the right way, though. You're having the conversation you're supposed to have. Yeah, but who is shitting on me? Saying no one shit on you. He oh. just no. He just said that the ref, that's the ref's son. Oh yeah. I was oh. saying I hate to burst your bubble, but I know you have the right approach to it. You're supp- that's supposed to break you into a conversation. Yeah. You or any other teenager or young Shut boy. Up. Shut about, up. About about what Shut it was mouth. like if it happened to you. you Shut your mouth. What would happen to me is I would believe it was real, and then just. But my whole analyzing would never go into the fun realm of like, what if it was you and you got to go in there and do it? And instead, I would be going like, now nah, this kid's somebody's kid. It might be his kid. Probably that guy's kid, actually. Dude, that's what we were saying. That's what I'm saying. That was the, the conversation we had. It wasn't like, oh, what if it was us? The conversation became like, oh, who's rich? Who's rich kid is this? Oh, I thought it was more fun than that. No, no, no. It got fun more when we when he won the titles, and you're like, how would you celebrate if you had the tag team title with Braun Strowman? I'm just ball busting. I'm not judging. I'll tell you what, uh, Daniel. I want to say his name right. I think it's Daniel Poon <laughs> on uh, <laughs> on Twitter. I, I, man, I hope I'm saying the right guy because he was the sweetest. He took off so he wanted to take a picture, and then I think he was gave, it Daniel Plain Plainview. Maybe I'm just bad if I saw it in the heartbeat. I've abandoned it my boy. But whatever it was, he uh, came and gave me a Crown Royal bag. Great, full of uh, GI Joes. That is a, awesome. I have to bring him in tomorrow. I forgot to bring him today, but it's pretty. There's a Zartan. That's great. There's a Broken Jinx. That's pretty good. There's a Roadblock. What? There's a half of a Cobra Commander that like he gave me in case I want to fix Jinx. Because the rubber band's in there. So what we'll do is we'll fix And wait, a couple more. But here's the thing. I would say what I did. I did this for real. I sat there. It's like uh, doing anything you did when you were a kid, just giving it a whirl again for a yeah. second. I, I just had it the next morning. Yeah. That was f- that was Saturday night, I think. It was Saturday. Maybe it was Friday night. It may have been Friday night. Whatever it was, um, I, when I was back in my hotel room at one point, I just like... Bored and stoned. I, I poured them out. Not even. I wasn't really able to get two st- uh, stone this weekend. But I pulled them out, and I just did a simple old... They're so much smaller than I remember, number one. Dude, they're very tiny. I didn't realize how small they were in my mind. I knew they weren't like big at all, but I just thought a little bit bigger. Yeah. But I just did a simple... I, you were always able to do... What's it called? The, the initial lockup. Oh, yeah. The, uh, wrestling. It's, it's called, called lockup. Something. It's just called a lock- lockup. Yeah, yeah, It's called lockup. One up. thing about their poseable arms is you could do that move, and I took Zartan and Roadblock and did a lockup. Yeah. And just, like, for one second, like, moved one another, <laughs> just moved it a little bit, and I went, I went, <laughs> I can't just play. Yeah. I can't just play with toys. Just be the only adult who's playing with toys uh, in a yeah. hotel room. Uh, Christine would rather I get a hooker <laughs> than find out that I spent an hour playing with G.I. Joe. Or you FaceTime Christine, and you go, do you want to see the Ford I set up? It's pretty <laughs> impressive. You want to see what'll make you come quick? You go, <laughs> There you go. Either I'm going to bang this working girl or I'm about to make a Cobra uh, fortress out of the other queen bed I'm not sleeping in. So you have a, t- you have a choice. <laughs> it was overall a wonderful event. Yeah. Zany's Nashville. How fun is that? Zany's Nashville was absolutely great. Two shows. Fenoich was with you? Fenoich was there. He killed it, man. Everyone did great. Um, Brian, who opens for Nate? He's Nate's guy. Oh, Brian Bates. Brian Bates, yeah. Very funny. He He hosted the shows. Oh, great. It was uh, it was fun. Very, very fun weekend. The, the the fans that came out, I can't thank enough. They were great. Huge bonfire continues. Yeah, dude. Skanks fans. Uh, it was awesome. It was fun to go back there. I'm watching that crowd grow each time I go back. Brian yeah. Bachner, who's just the shit. He's such a sweetheart. Uh, Dish, Adam Dishler, who's always oh, yeah. on the cruise ships. Uh, Ryan Beck. Uh, came out. Ryan Beck hung out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's He's, always... Uh, Nashville was such... I mean, I was just there like a month ago, and it's so much fucking fun. Who did you split the weekend with? Killer Bees. Killer Bees! Save up, save up. Um, was his were her shows like crazy sold out? I don't know because they have the killer bees. You know the top they built that for him and Zanies. 
It's called the Killer Bees patio. The top upstairs? Yeah. They like had it built The balcony out. seating? Yeah. For him. Really? Yeah. That's what I was told when I first worked Zanies with Nate and Keith Alberstadt. Who told it to you? Nate. <laughs> I think, Nate lied to me? I think Nate lied to you. So you're telling me I can't be the tag team champion? Can we come back from break? Can we get Nate on the phone and see if he just told, made that up for you? Did he make that up? I got a weird feeling he made that up. Here. You're, you're made up. I got an outside feeling that he made that up. Oh. That Zanies. Why don't you go play through G.I. Joe's get out of my face? Hey, look, Dan, you're right. Nate, I'm a tag team champion. Nate probably has never said something as a long-term practical joke to make somebody think something before. More likely... Zanies went into fucking zoning and contracting and building a whole new level to support killer bees. I think it's true, dude. Yeah, 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 totally. It is true. You know, true. don't reach out to Nate. Just believe that your friend <laughs> wanted you to know some information, I and do. he told it to you. Yep. And he's not setting you up for a moment like nope. this. By the way, Nate, Nate wouldn't do that. you're a genius if the payoff is that it just got said back... <laughs> On a national satellite radio show. Yeah. Glo- international. Global, dog. Global, Global. radio show. Uh, the, that was the greatest payoff of all time. Dude, you know what? You talk like this, and I'm going to get Nicholas, who's my friend, going to be my friend, <laughs> and half of the tag team champions in here. And he's going to fuck your shit up. Did you guys go, the kid's going to get so late when he goes back to go, school? This kid's going to get so much 10-year-old pussy. No. Are our guests here? Yes. They are okay. So let's take our second break here, and we'll come back. We have fun, <laughs> Dan. I've been giving you, I've been razzing you a bit about oh, wrestling, yeah, yeah, but don't worry, buddy. Yeah, it's about to pile on big on me <laughs> when our guests get in here. I'm okay. More Jethro that. Toll though. We didn't even talk about Jethro Toll. You're getting me into it. I'm gonna get you in the Jethro Toll. It's not. It's not. No. Don't. All right. First thing of getting in the Jethro Toll is you have to understand that Jethro Toll. I get why you'd say this. This is the same question I asked when I was five. Jethro Tull is, wasn't five. Jethro Tull is not is not the guy. Jethro Tull is. Uh, I didn't say he was a dude. You said he. You said you didn't tell me about him. You said you didn't even tell me about him. Yeah, well, there's a radio show that just has it on. Damn it's it. recorded. Well, do, uh, it's the name is, of the band. This is going back to sixth grade, where uh, that girl in my gym class goes, "Notorious B.I.G. Group or person?" And I go. Person? And she, goes, she goes like this. I go group, and she went what? And I'm like, group person? Ah, oh, god damn it, Mike, Mikey, Mikey I mean, L. Mikey L was her name. And you looked at him, and you go, I mean, he's big. I mean, I was being mean. I was calling him a group because he's fat. I was fat shaming because I know what that is. Twenty two uh, years before it's a thing. Fucking guy looks like a group, right? Right. And she goes, that would have worked if you said it immediately afterwards, not three days later. Going, Fuck. <laughs> true. True. Um, we'll be right back with our guest, Dan Soder. I love you. I love you too, Jay. And I love you, Jethro Toll, wherever you are. Hey, dude. <laughs> hey, Jethro Toll, dude, wherever you're at. Hey, hey, dude. I'm a fan of yours, dude. Dude, you know I hung out with Jethro Toll backstage? Awesome guy. Good guy. You go, hey. You go, good band? You go, no. Good guy. <laughs> band. I don't know. I guess they're just some day players. Mm. But the guy, Jethro Toll, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> he plays the flute. I always made the joke, that's what girls who like, just like groupies who just blow bands. Yeah. Like, with no rationale behind it get those things We're like i can't believe i just sucked off pantera and you're like who from pantera like pantera you know the guy pantera the, guy, the one guy with <laughs> yeah. the mustache i just call him pantera you get do you it. like when i suck your dick pantera <laughs> <laughs> um we'll be right back everybody it's the bonfire and now back to the bonfire with big j okerson and dan soder <laughs> no, you love a flute solo. I love the flute shit. It's Jeff the, Rotol all day. It's the Winwood section. The Winwood? Woodwind. Steve Wood. Steve Winwood. Steve Winwood section. Hey, everyone. We're back. It's the Bonfire. Comedy Central Radio, Series XM 95. Big Jokers and Dan Soder. Our guests are here. One of, them is, guest one of them's just an absolute legend and an angel and a privilege to have on the show. And I'm, of course, talking about Keith Robinson. Yeah. Keith Robinson is here. The other one yeah, you're already wound up to put his headphones on because of his new gelled curly hair. <laughs> and it makes it, me want to fucking <laughs> heel kick him right in his ear. I never and wear. I love him. And I love him. And that's the only reason I can make this much fucking anger at him. I just, never wear headphones. You never do. Because I've been doing this shit. I hate it. I don't need headphones. <laughs> let me tell you what's bothering me, Dan. What's bothering this you, This is Joe, Joe DeRosa, since you're not going to intro me. <laughs> no, I would have uh, been happy to. Uh, what bothers you know what? me is you, you guys said 7 o'clock... 
to we go on. Keith no, 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 I, no. They said be here fifteen minutes. Early. Exactly. Keith and I waited in that fucking lobby Good. like this was the Stern show. Good. <laughs> like we had to wait for you guys to take a break because you were really getting into it. I was waiting for them to come out and go. Listen, we're not doing the segment anymore, guys. We're really sorry. Maybe come back tomorrow. I would have one hundred percent done that had I known you'd been annoyed in the lobby. I would have been. Holy you know what I would have done? I would have had him gotten Keith. Had him come in and had DeRosa cool Keith, off. Keith is furious too. That's yeah, fine. Well. You guys, you guys, well, don't worry. It was good reason. Dan was giving me a full rundown recap of WrestleMania's events. Was, <laughs> I, was so, I was breaking down the tag division. I don't know. I just said probably just was worth well, more to him than you. Guys. <laughs> we were sitting there waiting. We realized we failed in the business. Yeah. 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 You, got, you, have, you, have, you both have former openers making you guys that wait. That is truly <laughs> the worst. Yeah. When a man who you once had to give forty dollars to on the street because he was so poor, twenty is making you wait to go on his radio show. Yeah. You failed. Yeah. You failed. I'm failed. I'm done. The has gone That's all it. the way to the bottom. I'm done. The the bottom, is that, is that the you, Dan, who did that? Yeah, he let me borrow 20 bucks so I could do a check spot. I, know the Rose, I gave it to you. I didn't ask for it back, you motherfucker. <laughs> the Rosa one time. The Rosa one time. Someone held on to that one. <laughs> do you remember when our old, uh, we were telling it here with, uh, with Nate the other day, Evan Steinberg stories before. Oh, yeah. Remember Evan Steinberg had you take two trains to go bring him a $10 commission? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, unbelievable. It was the same day that Jason Steinberg, uh, my other manager at the time, took multiple chicken McNuggets from me. The only food I could afford to eat at the time. Wait, in his office? Yeah, and he's, I go, do you want one? Like, literally just saying it out of obligation. Yeah, yeah a few. I'll and he goes, no. And he takes one, and then he goes, and he takes another one, and he goes, I took two. And I'm like, you fucking God. <laughs> You're double. That is so great. But Dude, the, what a power move. Uh, I have the best Evan Steinberg story of all time. Which is that? I don't know some uh, good ones. We were at a bar. We were at the Car- Remember when Caroline's used to have the part? I mean, maybe they still have No, they do still have it. They, 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 they throw the, like, the New York Comedy Festival party every year. Yeah. Uh, they used to have it at that bar in up in the Columbus Circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time Warner Center. Yeah, and it was like a schmancy fucking bar or whatever. So anyway, we're in there. Bar empties out. There's this really hot chick across the room, and she's with these dudes. And Evan was dressed as a cowboy. Hey. When he was going through his cowboy face, so he's wearing yeah. a cowboy hat. He's wearing a snap pearl snap shirt. He's got the sleeves rolled up, and there's a floral print on the inside. Of the <laughs> but that was your manager. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I, as, as you said, I yeah. failed. Uh-huh. I zigged when I should have zagged yeah. at every point in this you business. Probably your manager, uh, big hat. <laughs> anyway, he. Uh, Look at this little ass water too. Jay and uh, Dan have regular size waters. They gave us the kids' water. I I have a whole. I have a whole iced tea. I can finish the whole water. I I can finish a big boy water. I have a full coffee. Uh, All right, so, so anyways, you're being managed by a ranch hand. Anyway, he's, <laughs> Evan goes to the bathroom, and as he's walking back, he sees the hot the hot chick, and he takes his hat off, and he goes, howdy. Uh, and uh, one of the dudes like gets in his face, really? and they start going back and forth, but I can't hear what they're saying, because it's, it's across the room. And I'm just like, dude, don't, not here, not here, not now. Evan walks all the way back. I go, dude, listen, you got to chill out, dude. This is not the place to get into a fight. Like, And he goes, listen, I'm not doing it anything. I looked the guy right in his eye and I said, buddy, if you don't back off, you're going to get punched in the face by a man that has flowers on his shirt. <laughs> and it's going to hurt <laughs> like a motherfucker. <laughs> That's what he said at a, at a fucking... All right, that's not exactly the best... J- uh, I thought it was a good story. No. And you know, like is, he, this, is this a better one? He came to me one time. I had to leave his hotel room at a festival, I mean, yeah. however many, 13, 14 years ago. Mm-hmm. And there was a lady in there who was... I don't know what she did around comedy, but she was like crippled, essentially. She walked with a cane... She was like all crazy, bottom heavy, and older, and just very like sexed up. She just only talked about fucking. Oh no, I remember that up. lady. Yeah, but I remember he came back the next day. I saw him, and I go, "Hey," because he kicked everybody out of his room at one point. Yeah, and she, I know. She hung out, and then I go, "Did that old like crippled lady stay in your thing?" He's like, "Brother, she was a squirter." <laughs> and we're like, oh, oh, like that's the only time I've ever heard that. And it made me grossed out. Normally, I'd be like, "You got a video of that?" But I was like, "Oh." 
Oh, and he better led, story. And he led with a Hulk Hogan brother? <laughs> yeah. Well, let me tell you something, brother. <laughs> brother? Yeah. She he was, was a squirt. That one takes the cake. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what you guys get for giving commission to a dude in a poncho. <laughs> I wanted to have you guys in together because I got a, I didn't listen to a message until I saw Joe in L.A. And he goes, you didn't listen to me and Keith's message to you? And I immediately did when he said that about you guys shitting on me for... <laughs> <laughs> How much? I'll tell you what. This is, and I stand by uh, uh, that I love this, but this is evidence that the table, this the hang at the comedy cellar, that table that I came into comedy being around, really is dead. Yeah. Like the the yeah. vibe, the vibe of whatever that is that governs comedy is dead because no it was the first time somebody's come to me and go like. What the fuck are you doing singing songs <laughs> with the goddamn comedy jam every five seconds? I would do that show three times a night, seven days a week if I could. Dude. I, <laughs> I love it so much. And just while hearing Keith's voice after me doing this show now for a couple of years, <laughs> so many times, you, I'm sick of it. <laughs> just you got to jam, Jay. <laughs> you got to do the jam, Jay. Dude, the best is... I want to make my point. I had no problem with you doing the jam. I, I had a did. problem with. I had a problem with you guys talking about the beauty of the beautiful uh, gift Mark Marin has on guitar. You know what? Which you, made me fucking uh, yeah. sick. Dude, Forget all that. Marin can wail. You shouldn't be allowed to sing until you get so high in the business like Eddie Murphy. Okay. That's when you do that shitty song My Girl Loves to Party All My the Time. My wants to yes. party all the time. So but Jay's not... I was more of a put your mouth on me guy. Just, <laughs> Remember his other hit? But Jay jamming to a fucking song just bugged me. Jay, uh, it, well, it's you're what, still though? working a punchline in San Francisco. <laughs> but I'll never... You're right. <laughs> Me and Joe tried cops once. It was light. <laughs> yeah. She goes, with the powers of your draw together, we'll sell out. <laughs> no, we won't. No, we won't. Yeah. Why'd you do this to us? <laughs> I went this right back. A... I went right back. I ran back to the punchline. Dude, that club was so empty, I thought I was getting whacked. <laughs> like at Goodfellas, when he goes into the room, I was like, what the fuck? Oh, no. Yeah. No, you're, you're, talk, you're, talking to the, you're talking to the stage manager on the way in. Like, you remember the first time you headlined Cobbs, right? Yeah, P- Pike's Peak was a fucking pimple back then. Ah, what oh, the fuck? no. You know, Keith, I got to, I'm glad this happened. And I, I'm why I'm happy you came in because I do worry. I love it so much that I have such envy of the actual like singers and going to all those concerts and shit that I worry. Remember Dane Cook? Mm-hmm. Right. Put out a, a real. No, not a whole album. I think he put out a whole album. There was definitely no, a, just a song. But there was that. But it was a it, it was a sweetie little single. love song. Sorry, yeah, he wrote like a. You remember that? Put out a yeah, song. Yeah, he probably filled up an arena. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you're saying he's earned the right. Is it, yeah. is it arena level? So like, could Amy Schumer put out a song right now? Like a, a sincere song. Yeah, okay. probably. She did Kevin, arenas. Yeah, Kevin, Kevin he, he sits around in his dumb underwear. Yeah. And with his muscles showing. That really infuriates me. Voss? They're not uh, I mean, Kevin Hart. Oh. <laughs> Kevin <laughs> sits around Thoughts in his tight like underwear. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh,. It's it's. Look, I only had a problem with you guys just talking about Mark Maron's guitar playing, and then Dan being like, "I can't do the show. I wish I could." Jay, you do something up there that I, that I just don't understand. You weave a magic. Oh, oh no, my oh, god! Oh, Dan, hold Dan. up. Did Dan say that? No. He that's was a, the that's subtext. A fucking, that's a that's a wordy Joe Dan explanation. I just Jay? basically said I don't like doing it, and that Jay does like to do it. And no, no. Can you, I say you that you admired that he was able to do it because you couldn't do it? Yeah. You did yeah. Say that. Jay? Say, All right. Well, I did, I did say I was good at the words. He weaves a magic. <laughs> <laughs> did Jay, say, you trans you transcended two genres of arts that day. <laughs> I go, Jay, when I watch you, I watch you become light, bright, warming light on that stage. <laughs> But and the Mar- thing was, Mar- what Mar- I want to know was Jay really into it. Oh, Jay gets man. super into it. Ah, oh, that super fucking into infuriates it. me. I want to do it so bad. Yeah, this- I look. I really. I think about my my movements when I'm putting my foot up, <laughs> so I can really crack Here it, it out for the crowd. Keith, here's here's a highlight of Jay. It's a fun show. To, I've done the show. Shut it's up, a fun Joe. show. <laughs> You just kicked it off for Dane Cook's song? (laughs) (laughs) 
Now, Keith, now that you've seen it, how do you feel about it? <laughs> now you, I'm, now you I'm get it. So right? annoyed right now. <laughs> Just seeing up there. You yeah, does it, it, are you saying he looks like a guitar tech? Uh, like he's it doing a rock fucking infuriates me. It and is he a bad angle. Dumb hoodie on. Uh, Jay it's, not a good ang- it's not a good angle. Can for, I tell you guys, the someone that was there and the someone that was moved by it, it was great. No. <laughs> I'm gonna stick you. fully. I'm gonna stick and fully Mark, to the angle. And Mark Marin, for the record, fingers of gold. Say it again. Say it again. I'm gonna throw my baby water at you. <laughs> the, guy, the guy can play. Uh, oh, wait I love a Marin, but Marin, <laughs> shut up! Don't preface it by saying I love Marin. Fuck Marin. <laughs> this doesn't belong in comics' hands. We didn't tell jokes. That's it. Yeah. Sick of this shit. Well, now we gotta sing and I dance. Bet, really? I bet. I bet that band told you they can learn five Peebo Bryson songs. You'd be on tour <laughs> yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to see Keith do Bell <laughs> Biff DeVoe. <laughs> One Earth, One Fire. Oh, I used to babysit Ricky Bell when I was fifteen. <laughs> Hit it. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of people say. A lot of people say Barry Gordy was a bad guy. I think he was a great guy. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to do the show, but just for the record. You guys know any Ohio players? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, you did catch me being funny at one time. When hey, don't sing songs, don't start out your songs and music, uh, you fucking asshole! I curse them out. Here's what was so funny about that was that Keith, yeah, he was very judgmental on me and Kev when we were starting because we both had a zillion DJ hit it <laughs> and put put that song on. Sure, yeah, and then Keith, now Keith though at this point he was helping me and Kev out because he was already. He was out of the the black circuit of just doing the black rooms only. He was doing mainstream clubs and everything. And then, but he came back because he was living in Philly at the time. You came back and just did the Laugh House for a week out of convenience. There was no helium yet or anything. Yeah. It was just the Laugh House. And Keith did a weekend there, and he, and he told him, he goes, come on, bye, young fellas. Come watch me. I'm going to do a weekend at the Laugh House. We came to hang out <laughs> and watched him. And Keith, in the middle of a set, he goes, all these bands are doing drive-bys and killing Tupac and Biggie. And he goes, you never heard that? You never saw Gladys Knight and the Pips going by on a drive-by? <laughs> DJ! And then he's like, three different songs. Oh, you got Marvin Gaye playing yes, when you're going through it. And he kept going. Yeah. Dude, we Fuck sat in the back man. of the room, just like what? Me, me? It was like literally, like seeing the puppet strings behind. That's like, right. like that's not real. Let's right. also not forget Keith's bit of my brother's a preacher and he breaks into Earth, Wind, and Fire. There, so whatever the <laughs> fuck that horseshit was. Oh, God damn it, Keith! I want hey, to be on your side my today. My brother was a preacher. <laughs> <laughs> Keith goes, if life gives you lemons, you turn it into lemonade. <laughs> He goes, yes, oh, mother comedy's mother about mother. life, right? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Holy but, shit. I mean, what you can pull off in, like, the Laugh House when you started, man, it was, I mean, how many people used to murder with just, like, oh my God. anything like that? Do rap lyrics in a fucking preacher's voice? Did, all that shit. Did you have a DJ hit it? Because you started the Laugh House, too. I never had a DJ hit it, but I had a... Um... <laughs> Did yeah. you have a DJ hit it? Because you started the Laugh House, too. I never had a DJ hit it, but I had a... Um... <laughs> I would ask them to put on a. Remember that? What's that ludicrous song where he was like, "My business, my business." <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. Know. Stay is the fuck B-side? up out of my business. Remember that ludicrous? Ludicrous song. song. I don't remember that song. It was a bit. It was like kind of a hit at the yeah, time. I know what you're talking about. So I didn't have a DJ hit it, but I would ask in the beginning to go up to that song, and go, so I could is? grab the mic and be like, "It'd be like, you know, he's serious. When you call it your business, you are serious." <laughs> oh, black people, I get your stuff. Anyway, that's all you're saying. I did the same thing too. I think I'd get an applause break. Oh, I believe. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Dude, I love that you leaned into it like a teacher in an inner city high school. Yeah, You go, you guys ready to learn some dope stuff? (laughs) But I had, I didn't have DJ hit it, hit hit it, Dan, but I had a lot of, uh, I had a lot of like references, hip hop radio references and shit like that. Did Vecchione have any? Because I know you. Dude, Vecchione, (laughs) Vecchione. He was running for his life. And you motherfuckers. (laughs) You motherfuckers! I got deep cuts on Becky Young. Oh, I know, I know the big, I know the biggie. I got, the, I got which, which the puppet, the yeah. puppet rap yeah, with yeah. McDonald's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, and that's the face I made. I couldn't even wrap my head around that high concept horse shit. <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck is he doing?" He kept layering horse shit on top of it. He's like, "It's a song, and it's a song about McDonald's, and it's a puppet is going to come out." I was like, what what he had a puppet? puppet? Are you doing? He had a Listen, puppet. Yeah. The audience, female. And male, everywhere we're performing at this point was seventy five percent cornrows. So 
<laughs> What's that mean? He was <laughs> <laughs> so Vecchione was scary because he also and, he, and at all, no matter how you flip Mike Vecchione. He looks like a cop. I mean, if you dressed him hip hop, he'd look like an undercover cop. Yeah. Oh my god! If you dressed him, in like, a, uh, yeah, put a bandana on him. Becky like, Owen never dressed hip hop. He always no, dressed he never white. Did. No, right. Yeah. So he he went looking like that. So he was scurrying. So Mike, by at the end, he was punch drunk. He was talking to a he was talking to a a, a paper bag puppet on a mic stand. Dude, what? He lost it. Uh, I can't believe he's become what he's become. He's so fantastic. That was so bad. <laughs> Wait, what? He would talk to a... I mean, I'm mad he's not... He scared. had to pack a paper bag with a face, <laughs> with a face on, on it. it. So he drew a paper bag oh, and that lips. That makes me angry. Just and I know for a dumb fact, Mike. And knowing living with Mike for seven years, I know that before every one of those shows, he just breathed heavily through his nose at a kitchen table, coloring in that paper bag. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, 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 to this day, I don't understand what the joke was supposed to be. It was something about having sex in McDonald's. And like I just remember the one line was... I'm, I'm, after that we're done I'm smoking a fry that was like one of the punchlines like instead of a cigarette it didn't make any fucking sense <laughs> it was the ratings of a madman I like that you guys are all, like you guys are all breaking down open mic premises we are like right oh dude I'm telling you Vecchio and say that was so ridiculous I promise you while he was painting a face on a paper bag he was probably going like I don't even know why I got a master's <laughs> he has a master's degree yeah he's in teaching I know he's fucking multiple talk. degrees and then on Wednesday nights he would go down <laughs> for, for a bunch of Timberland boots and <laughs> with a plastic bag wait a minute jersey. Jay keeps talking like uh, around Jay yeah cornrows <laughs> Timberland boots what are you talking about Jay blacks <laughs> <laughs> I was right next to him except I just I did everything just shy of corn rowing my hair dude Jay just Jay's was like, like I'm, uh, Jay's like I'm not saying anything rac- racist anyway these fucking Timberland boots <laughs> yeah. they all come into the club he's really, he's really uh, talking about you know it like, it he's, is. like he's a, like he's a cop at the precinct trying to get around it he goes let's just say there was a lot of backwoods rappers yeah. in their pockets yeah. I guess these days I have to say Timberland boots uh, because yeah. everybody's so fucking no. sensitive uh, me too hashtags yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no man. I, well, I be yeah, all I, these cool cigarettes coming there. <laughs> <laughs> these guys smoking their jazz cigarettes. Yeah, it's, it's a bunch of you know the whole crowd's full of Newports. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> You go, let's just say those uh, next tells. Uh, uh, Jesus, really. grape Kool Aid talking about that. <laughs> huh? Those jokes were huge, by the way. Next tell jokes? Of they course. were huge because every black dude had a next tell. Everybody had a chirp next tell joke. Yeah. Everybody had a fucking chirp next tell joke. Where are you at? Where are you at? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I had one. But, I, but me and Vecchio, the difference between me and Vecchio is I completely. Joe talked the talk, I talked it and dressed it from head to toe. Now, Jay, when I seen Jay, James. Jay was dressed like a black guy. Yes, I, <laughs> but please, like a South Pole jacket. <laughs> I, <laughs> was your was, Jay? Was Jay your, is still dressed like a black guy, <laughs> except from slave times. <laughs> <laughs> I dressed Jay, like Nat Turner. Yeah. <laughs> Jay's got fingerless gloves and chains. Like, uh, hey, where's the Underground Railroad? <laughs> no, Jay. One thing about Jay, Jay was a white guy that wasn't scared of a black room. Yeah. No, yeah. He was not scared of a black room. He, of Jay course going I was. To any, no, you no, I was scared. That's why I dressed exactly like them. And came out, I was like, huh? Will you just laugh, please? Me? This is me. I'll I talk about P. Diddy. Yeah. Jay we went to some dangerous he shit. He used the black crowd. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That's all we had there. It was, that, was, that was all there was. Yeah, there was no... I, I, it makes me laugh now. Everybody's Wait. like, oh, Helium, and the, the, the Punchline. There's all these like other clubs in Philly. It's like, that was the only fucking room, unless you wanted to go up to Scarpati's room in the Northeast. Yeah, you get ripped off real Which good. was, yeah, that, that was somehow worse than <laughs> going to <laughs> the safe Northeast. I never did any of his gigs before. But really? I know, but I know the Andy Scarpati, you did him? No, I heard about him. I've heard all about him from the Vecchione. Pickle Man. There was all those local Philly guys. I used to do Pickle did, Man. But they didn't like the, me. The Garbers. Because I didn't stop dressing like that when I left the, the black clubs. I would just go there just the <laughs> same way and they'd go... That Def Jam stuff's not going to work here. That's what they would say? What are you gentlemen talking about? God, <laughs> this FUBU, I'm wearing this FUBU hoodie because it's warm. I definitely got to a point. This is this is when you know you're selling out too hard to a black crowd as a white comic, is when you have a white guy impression. 
Uh, that's where you, you're you done. <laughs> when you go, I walk in this place, there's all white people in there. They're looking at me even like, how do you come in here dressed like that? This is a place of employment. Dude. And I'm like, what's this motherfucker talking about? I <laughs> <laughs> Well, your grandmother lived in a black neighborhood. I still, think. yeah, yeah. She will not move. That bitch still there. <laughs> <laughs> her and Jerry, her boyfriend, lives right across the street. <laughs> and this guy, what's just his fucking... last name? Atrick, <laughs> folks. <laughs> I mean, she lives there. They still battle rap on her front step and shit. It's crazy. <laughs> That's great. They call her Miss Jeanette. Miss Jeanette. I just remembered another thing Vecchione used to do. <laughs> He's gonna fight you. He used to do a call and response thing sometimes on his jokes. So he would go, he would go, people, how many people agree with me that more, mostly men patronize or patronize uh, or patronize? How, how many people agree in here that it's mostly men that patronize? Uh, 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 Can you remember the joke? <laughs> how can you make agree men patronize Hooters? And he would go like this. We'd grab the mic and he'd go. And hold it out, and the crowd would go, "Yeah!" <laughs> Wait a minute, that's, that's a 1988 up. false move. Dude, Is that 88 it. Rick false move? <laughs> Just tap yourself. Oh, like dude, Mo Better Sundays. You know it. You know yeah. Keith may have been there for my. I think you and Kev both like stared at me for 45 minutes after. I had a shitty joke. I may have even said on the show before, but a call and response where I required the crowd. I actually wrote something recently where I was the crowd did like say a word for me once yeah that I was trying to find and then when I said the punchline like it did kind of that moment made it sound good and one time after that I tried to get the crowd to like give the answer for what I was saying so I could say the line I was like no I'm just gonna say it <laughs> I'll forego that because I had some joke about uh, got a thing. I don't know if someone put something up, something up their ass, and I was like, "Oh yeah, everything from this to this thing to." And I'm trying to get to plunger, and I just go, "Oh yeah, you know the thing you use to uh, unclog the toilet, you know." Uh, and I would, and usually somebody goes plunger, and then I can go, "Oh, you've been there before," yeah. like you know, to say yeah. they've had a plunger up their ass. Yeah, that was the big, the big punch, the big punchola. <laughs> Sounds yeah. like a good bit to me. Thanks, bro. <laughs> so women. Dan Soda, you never had to go through the, the black room. Oh, no, I went through the seedy fucking Arizona desert casinos where they're just a bunch <laughs> methed out and they don't care at all. They're just like losing money. You're just performing for a room full of sad people. Oh, Jesus. You yeah. went to a black show. You, yeah, that sounds, that you, you went to a black show with me and saw me lose it on the crowd. It was unbelievable. <laughs> I, wanted Wait, man, I, I wanted to fight Sugar Bear. I wanted to fight everybody. <laughs> By the way, you wanted like, to fight Sugar Bear. Was Sugar that? Bear, the nicest man. Uh, no, he wasn't. No, he threw Jay under the night. bus big time. Oh, dude, but, no, that was that's where you, you could count on that in the black room. If yeah. you bombed, Whoa. you were going under the bus. You Wait, know that I'm that's the only true. black guy here. Take it easy. Hey, what's Lou? Oh, Lou. Well, speak up, Lou. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, Lou? Uh, you know, a show called so, Bonfire. What are you doing, man? Uh, uh, so Jay was doing. His, Jay was doing his. Should we call it House Fire? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it should be called Lit. Yeah. Yeah. It's lit. It's lit. This uh, shit is lit, yo. Yeah, watch well, sugar. Yeah, you get thrown under the bus quick. Oh well, you know, Jay. Well, was, say at least rest in peace, Sugar Bear. Yeah, rest in peace. I like Sugar Bear. R. P. But he is dead. <laughs> he is dead, in fact. <laughs> yeah. And I watched... No. Yeah. Right. Rest oh, in peace. Jay did this. Uh, Jay was doing this joke about pubic hair, and he got to this woman, and he's like, well, "Miss, what's your pubic hair like?" And this lady goes, "That's your boss's daughter." Well, she, he goes, "That's the that's the guy who booked you's daughter." And he goes, "Great, where's he? I'll ask him." <laughs> this is a great line. This is a great line. By the way, I'm sitting at the bar with Richie Redding, and we're the only two white people besides Jay in the entire <laughs> place. And I give out such a real laugh, and, I'm like, <laughs> and no one else laughs. And no everyone, one else laughs. And everyone looks at me, and I'm like, well, I'm clearly the Robin in this racist Batman duo. <laughs> no, if you recall, what happened also when I first went up, the DJ never stopped playing the music. I was like, I even gave him, I was like, oh, thank you, man. And he didn't stop playing. And then at one point, after like an awkward amount of time, like 20 more seconds, I look back at him, I'm like, hey, man, you can cut it. And he's just looking at me like, what are you going to do? And he just kept playing it to be a dick. Mm -hmm. oh. The only people that enjoyed it were the, the white bartenders who were so happy this was happening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll tell you this. I, hats, I, got uh, a, I got a real easy double on that one. <laughs> They're like, here you go, buddy. <laughs> my, oh, sorry. No, what were you My saying? hat's off to Richie Redding. There's a dude that 
I mean, the, the whitest man on planet Earth. Opens for Cat Williams. Yeah, and used to go up in the lav house and just kill with his Bob Hope face with that <laughs> yeah. fucking yeah. sloped yeah. nose yeah. <laughs> and his slick down hair. Yeah. And he would fucking kill. Yeah. Well, and I it, like the fact that y'all had to do uh, black rooms. I, I love to, it. I didn't have to I do like black, that fact. I didn't have to I do black it. rooms until I came to New York and then I did uh, Talents Room a couple times and like yeah. that. But I didn't come up. I came up watching sad ass fucking casino people oh uh, yeah and yeah. Tucson I did, Dude, sh- but, I did shows like, out in bed when I first moved here before bed was cool yeah, remember yeah. like Dawn B had a f- show out there like well you should have I yeah. like that no, I, I did in, in the 80s I did white rooms yeah and I lost my edge I came on stage with my hat my velour hat, my <laughs> fucking schoolboy glasses, and a guy told me I was scaring the audience. So I'm like, what? He said, yeah, you got to wear easy walkers and dockers <laughs> and shit like that. And as years went by, you know, it, it changed my whole perspective. And I went back to the to the neighborhood, and I'm like, hey, how you guys doing? Uh-huh. Oh, what the fuck are you, potty? <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking wearing a bolo tie. Yeah. He goes, what's up, fellas? He hey, goes, fella, are you stuck in your white guy impression? Oh, what's what's good, gentlemen? The, f- <laughs> the funniest, the funniest uh, black room boo I've ever seen happen. Kyle Grooms was doing what a talent. Remember, talent had that really tough room on the. I think it was on the Upper East Side. Uh huh. I can't remember the name. Harvest of it. Moon or something like that. Blue. No, Moon. it was called like. <sighs> I can't remember. Was that anyway, 90th. It was it was that wasn't that far up, but it was like somewhere on the east side. But he goes uh on stage and he he wasn't doing well. People started echoing him and he goes, Y'all better shut the fuck up. I'm a, he goes, I'll set a bomb off. There are gonna be cheap suits and hair weaves all over the avenue. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesus Christ, dude, the entire room it was like a fucking it was like when Trump says fake news and everybody starts booing. <laughs> it was one of the ballsiest fun I I always love that about grooms. Like if it wasn't going well, he's like, I'll, "I'll fucking go down with the ship. I don't care at all right now." He was he would always take one. I think everybody should have to do a white room. I mean, a black room. You should. I agree with. I, I would oh. never change anything about that. Everybody it, it taught, should have it, to. It taught me. So I mean, people are so blown away that Kurt. Like started in the black room, so I'm like, yeah, he did too. It's like, was it, it, what was yeah. his name? Bring him back, Kurt. Bring him. We used to call bring him back, Kurt. So it, it always went haywire first, and then the comics all knew he was funny. So then they had to go up and tell the crowd, like, stop booing him because he's uncomfortable and wearing a hyper color shirt. <laughs> No, that's and, the best training. It was the best training ever, dude. Well, bombings is good training. It was, it but was, man, when we came to New York, <laughs> holy shit, was Kurt far more ready for when Keith would get us like. I mean, Keith was getting me and you know Kevin and Kurt some like stuff in the city, and Kurt would get up and like his jokes. He was all he was waiting for was a beautiful white audience to finally <laughs> enjoy these these wonderfully woven, intricate, and layered, nuanced jokes. And I'm in front of, and I'm going after Kurt at these fucking rooms, and I'm going like, "Y'all have a fucking bitch to fucking P Diddy songs." You be hitting that shit like. Pop. And then Keith being in the back just going like, stop doing the stuff. Fucking the stool. Kurt, Kurt, you're right. Jay, you're not. <laughs> let's uh, let's take our last break. We're hanging out with Joe DeRosa and Keith Robinson. Uh, yeah, it's the bonfire. We'll be right back. And now, back to the bonfire with Big Jay Okerson and Dan Soder. I'm in it. Jethro Tull Day. I'm on board, dude. Who's that? Who's Jethro that Tull. Singing? Y'all Jethro. white happy faces piss me off. Keith. Jethro Tull, Just man. everybody I'm looking around and your satisfied faces oh, bug me. Oh, nothing I like more than arranged <laughs> rock music. <laughs> Less bass, more treble, please. <laughs> Keith's more of a Count Basie man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Wave in the water. Uh, Keith, you listen to this. Keith put me through a lot of long rides and a Ford Focus. Listen I met him listen to the Dells, Mahil Jackson. But I was fine with some of these. The, the rough days were when Keith goes, uh, yeah, I'm doing some gospel. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, there's no good gospel. <laughs> there's none. There's plenty of good soul funk, but there is no good gospel. Nah, there is no real. Let's just put the windows down and head up the highway, man. These and listen seven, to some fucking these yeah. seventeen light blue suits are going to lead us all <laughs> in New York City. 
But you never get stopped by the cops when you listen to gospel. Oh, there it is. Is there that the go. trick? Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's you really got to go music <laughs> to gospel. gospel. Like, I'm going to lay off for the warning. My mama left Mahalia Jackson, too. <laughs> Carry on. It's always, always nice to see another God-fearing man out on the street. You have God a bless. good day, sir. God keep bless. Keep going. God bless. Keep, keep, keep going. Uh, well, you you want to set this up? Because, I mean, we have like 12 minutes. I think this might fill up. It is. This made me and Joe, Joe stay in my house this week, and, and this made us really laugh hard last night so logic yeah is the subject of the episode one of the new series rapture on netflix uh which is where i guess they're spotlighting a new and it seems to be all like newer people right okay the whole the whole right. show and uh, logic, well, no, a logic guy no nah, nah, some there's some more yeah is nas in there yeah, Nas is one. It's it's a mix. It's a okay. mix. Sorry. So the, are these episodes are, are each episode based on a rapper? Yes, it's like it, a docu. It's a docu series. Okay. each episode is a rapper, and they okay. do like and it's logic. called Rapture on yeah. Netflix. A guy told me to watch this one because he said he's a fan of mine, and he's uh, uh, he said Logic is his favorite rapper, and he goes also he's I talk a lot on the show about like the anxiety and shit that I fucking had. Yeah. And uh, or get even, and I guess this guy talks a lot about and deals with that too. Uh, however, he's an inspirational rapper, so it's not my cup of tea musically. I think he's talented, but it's not really anything I would uh, like buy an album of. But because uh, you know, his, main, his I think his biggest hit is the the title of the song is the Suicide Hotline number. Yes, and he does some meet and greets and some Q and A stuff as he's going around. I guess prepping for his new album to come out, and. He uh, he has a guy in an audience who just caught me and Joe so off guard. <laughs> Ask him a question. This is a. I have to be able to describe this guy to be a thirty-something, <laughs> if not forty-year-old. Yeah, he comes. This guy uh, like, comes like, apart in a way. This guy comes unglued in a way where I said during the break, I go, I almost feel bad, man. This dude's like got emotional not issues. Not me. I don't feel bad uh, about this guy, at all. The guy that's asking the, the question. The guy asking the question is, dude, it's literally like when somebody would like, remember when they showed like the video of the girl seeing the Beatles in yeah. the 50s? Like, yeah. it's like that. Oh, I mean, let's But he asks him. Logic? But what do you say? Yeah. Yeah. Beatles? Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> what, what is I'm this saying. guy? What does this guy look like? Well, describe him, Joe. What do you. I think like a. I don't see color. First he looks of like all. he looks like Al Madrigal. <laughs> I see color. Yes, he's Hindu. He's whatever Al Mad. He's what he's he whatever look, Al Madrigal is. He does look Hindu. <laughs> his voice, you know, I think it speaks for itself. Let this guy ask his question. Go ahead, Christine. What's, What's your up, name? Bro? Thank What's you it? so much. Oh, I mean, so much for me. But back it up. Back it up. Just give us a twenty-second lead into this. Oh boy. There's no way. Fucking crazy, insane time. And I was like on the brink of insanity. This but everybody is logic from talking. Foster, everybody here, uh, both the bodyguard, everybody, so many people that are in my life, everybody that's in my life has heard me just not shut the fuck up about anxiety. And it was all of them and all of their help that, that gave me the strength and the courage to be on the stage today. Wait a minute, logic is a white guy. Thank you. Go ahead, man, go ahead. What's, What's your up, name? Bro? Thank What's you so much. Oh, that's man. so much for me. <laughs> And I just want to thank you. Your music is inspired me to do a lot. Zoinks! So uh, I can ask you questions, man. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, you got my it. My one question is, how do you deal with all the responsibility you have? And can I have a hug, please? Yeah, you can have a hug. <laughs> Somebody get this guy. Get this guy. Guys, back Give it up. A... Back it up. We're not pumping any fake... This is not DJ Lou doing what? anything this. He goes... Uh, two questions. One, how do you deal with responsibility? Can I have a hug? And he goes, sure, make it. He goes, ooh. ooh, ooh. <laughs> I mean, ooh, he, uh, he comes unglued. So why do you think, like, the old, the old, the old, the old amusement park is haunted, right, Scoops? Oh, I, I said to Jay last night, he sounds like one of the puppets in the Dark Crystal. Like, Labyrinth. Oh, Dark Crystal. We said the dark, uh, Henson's Dark Era. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where Henson was doing Coke and he goes, I got a puppet that's real sad. You guys want to see a vulture? Hip hop, though. What's not? This, this. You don't this think? Not hip hop. No, no, it's probably not. Imagine that if they go, oh, Eric B. Eric him, you made me feel like I was a part of the streets. It, yeah, it, 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 it's Spectre Deck. You and your, your variety of hats. My, 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 my question is for Shine. Uh, what's it like shooting and then going to jail? Can I have a hug? Imagine, imagine a Wu-Tang clan. Can I have a 
Fuck! Fuck! No. Yeah. Oh, I don't clean that on that player. Yeah. <laughs> Sticky fingers? How are you keeping so real in our hearts? Can I, can I have a hug? I'm not going down, but I'm dying of thirst! That's fucking hilarious. Yeah. That's these, fucking so funny. All these old funny. school dangerous hip-hop. Oh, fucks in harmony? I have two questions. How do you rap so fast and can I have a hug? Can you? Do you miss your Uncle Charles? <laughs> Will I see you in the crowd? <laughs> I can't see how the audience hit rob him. They can't be hip hop conscious. Because that's that the whole audience is like that. Everybody's uh, crying. It's, it's a, nerd rap. Uh, it's logic soft bugs me. It's therapy rap. You know when I express he's myself. White. He's half black. He's half black, half white. By the way, so now only uh, half yeah. annoys you. Uh, I'll tell you what though. Whatever. Yeah, now you got to give him a pass. Yeah, you know, no. racist. Ah. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what. Though, I'll tell you what though. His white half is what's affecting this fucking Indian fellow like this. So, <laughs> Christine, play it again. There is please. a time. Oh, ah, this fucking I want you to hear his after. I want you to hear the, the question. I have two questions, and one is, what's the responsibility of the hug? Yeah, the noise he makes it's after. Taking the courage to be on the stage today. Thank you. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. What's, what's up, your bro? name? Thank you so much. Oh That's man. So much for me. <laughs> And I just want to thank you. Your music has inspired me to do a lot. But uh, can I have two questions? Can I ask? Go ahead. Yeah, Um, you got it. My one question is, how do you deal with all the responsibility you have? And can I have a hug, please? Yeah, you can have a hug. (laughs) Somebody get this guy. Get this guy. Give me a hug. By the way, uh, when he when he starts yelling, somebody get this guy. I thought he was to kick him out because he's yeah, getting he goes, weird. He goes, can someone pat that guy? guy? Can someone pat that guy down? Can someone pat that guy I down? Gotta say. Y'all, I want to bring this guy up here to show y'all what a bitch looks like. This a bitch. Now, this I don't is, hug I bitches. Gotta say, this is what alternative comedy did to comedy. This, this is, shit right here with drag. I will say You're this right. much. My hats. My hats off to logic. Because he does hug him because he's clear, like, if I don't hug this kid, he's going to go shoot up a fucking 7-Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, have, I have two questions. <laughs> I got to say a few lives no right now. No real hip-hop rapper <laughs> hugs this motherfucker. Yeah. They mug him and take his chain. <laughs> I, like, I like Keith. Is like his, his, uh, Keith's up on stage. He goes, invite him up here and take his wallet. I'm telling you. <laughs> show, show the rest of the audience you mean business. I'll say that's my, 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 that's one of my favorite things about Keith when we used to take these long drives. Keith's got a million stories of knowing a guy who knows a guy and being involved in some shit back in the day. <laughs> like, public enemy come to town, and my cousin Michael was the running security. Anyway, there was naked bitches, gunfights, girl got stabbed, <laughs> his nut cut a titty off. Yeah. They were running drugs. We- and, it's like, and then you started doing comedy? Yep. <laughs> is there any way? Because I really want to. I really want to hear these back to back. I'm sorry. I, I'm hoping I'm not overstepping my bounds. Can you pull up the? <laughs> this is the Christine the question. Old, Christine, can you pull up the old Mystic scene of the the scene of the Mystic leader dying in the Dark Crystal? <laughs> it sounds so much like that guy. It's uncanny. <laughs> I want to. Right. I want to A B it real bad. I tell you what, this sucks. It's a part. It's a part of a bigger conversation. I was worried we were going to have when it comes into. But I was saying this before the show. Right here to Black oh, this Lou. Is it. This is it. This well, is hang it. on. Pause, pause whoa, for a second. Whoa, whoa. What's his name? Black Lou. <laughs> Black Lou. White Lou. Are you accepting Black Lou? He actually told us to call him that. We were calling yes, him Lou. Because ex- I'm okay with being black, so there's no reason to be... Nah, I guess not, he's not ashamed you know of it like you are, Keith. Your brother Lou. <laughs> brother, brother Lou? Lou. <laughs> now he's the fruit of Islam? Yeah, I'm cool with that. If, I'll tell you what's weird. <laughs> is, if you want to be a 5 percenter, I'm cool with that. Too. Brother Lou? I'll tell you what's weird is Black Lou is dressed like White Lou, and White Lou is dressed like Black Lou. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> you are totally right. Right, but I was saying the Black Lou before the show that uh, I don't know something about. I, I've never enjoyed inspirational. Hip- I want my hip hop to be uh, uh, violent yeah. or yeah. violent or sexual or uh, or, yes. I, or bragging, uh, and, and an awesome beat. I don't care about these this like Tony these Robert sing song shit. these this sing songy man. hooks. It's just fucking let's see inspirational the, horse shit. Yeah, I, I just want to ask you two questions. What should I do with my retirement? I kill yourself. I, have a hug? Uh, I got a couple extra bucks for my tax let's, return. Let's, I want to invest. Can you Keith, help? Keith Robinson, I'm a fan of Tough Crowd. I want to know two questions. <laughs> let's Number not one, fuck you. What was Craig Geraldo like? And can I have a hug? <laughs> let's hear these guys back to back, man. I'm telling you, this is going to be uncanny. <laughs> I was born under a shattered sky. The 
Listen to that puppet's voice and then listen to this dude. I'm telling you. They have the same demeanor. Yeah, the same demeanor, but the, the guy is just constantly. Let's focus on this guy. He has a CEO wave. Thank you. That's pissed me off. What's up, Thank you so much. It's the same voice. It's not bad. Why is nobody behind me on this? I said it's not. It's closer than I thought it was, actually. Here, the second time. Here, listen. Nah. <laughs> Shh. Nah. Oh, yeah. No. No. Scooby Doo is a better analogy. <laughs> Shut up, Keith. Yeah. This, you don't think stinks. He's fucking with a dumb voice. Just because you're not cultured enough to know the deeper Jim Henson work. <laughs> don't get mad because you don't get the fucking reference. You got to shit on it. That's our culture. Muppet culture. <laughs> don't a white guy who makes Stop puppets. trying to appropriate it for your own black yeah, purposes. Keith. Um, Am I Black Keith? <laughs> Black Keith. Do you want to be Black Keith now or Brother Keith? I'll tell you, you what. Brother, brother Lou. Keith. Hello, but, brother that's Lou. It. but that's the end. That's the end of fucking like that. This hip hop is all there. They always have a girl. That's not all, but that's not all hip hop. It's there's this. There's it's, a girl singing the hook on every popular song. There's a yeah. girl singing a hook. But of the song, and then the guy's coming on and going like, "Treat women right. Don't squeeze a titty. Yeah, there, Say hi to her. Get learn about who she is now." The time there was a time. <laughs> what, a, what terrible! Look, there was a time. <laughs> yeah, there was it's a time dumb. where better hip. There was there was some good hip hop in the mainstream, but mainstream hip hop for the most part always was eh, like you know it was fucking Kwame. Only you. No, there was. <laughs> you know well, but mean? even but even no, those but even those weren't like going to black Lou with this shit. Come on, Black Lou. What do you think about hip hop? Black Lou only listens to what white girls want to fuck to. <laughs> yeah. Black, Lou's, Black Lou's treadmill jams are Taylor Swift and fucking Twenty One Pilots. I mean, Black Lou he will Black, himself, he keeps himself in white pussy. Black Lou will Black Lou will mouth the words to deep cuts off a Third Eye Blind album. I'll tell you this. I know Black Lou looks I like the scientist that fixes cyborgs. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Morton. Black Lou's got Joe Morton energy. Oh, dude, he really does look like Tyson from Skynet. <laughs> <laughs> Every time Jan go like this, we go, show him. <laughs> Jay cuts his arm. <laughs> Jay, show him. Oh, that's well, great. I, I agree with Jay, though. The, the hip hop that's trying to like uplift you and build you up, I really hate. Especially Macklemore. Yeah, I hate him, too. Oh, oh, Macklemore's yeah. the worst. White, you know what it is? They've let white guys infiltrate it too much now. Yeah. That's the problem. But it's just the mainstream bullshit. It's like you could say the same thing about Ice Ice Baby or whatever. It's like it's like there's tons of great rappers out there right now. They just don't get to see the mainstream but rate. Even but Ice Ice Baby was good. Kendrick Lamar is good. Yeah. Kendrick's a good mainstream rapper. Great. Yeah. He's fantastic. Uh, yeah. He concert a couple times. He's fantastic. I made right, Jay. Yeah. I made you a few uh, rap uh, joints. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, you made Jay mixtapes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, because Keith had uh, my computer was dial up. Keith had DSL line yeah. Napster, <laughs> and he just had and he had a, a fat stack of blank, oh, dude. I love the, the CD, CDRs recordables. I, I love the fact that Keith was definitely on a razor phone and goes like this. Hold on, I gotta put another CD in. <laughs> One, <laughs> you are. 100% bullseye on that. Burn it. Keep it hang up a star tech. And put it back in the fucking, the fucking. Look, you felt like you felt like a star commander because you had it on your, hanging off your hip. You and, then Ke- and by the way, Kev would sell everything he owns just to have the new thing to look like he was successful from the very beginning. Remember uh, that? Kev was such a fraud. Kev, had a, dude, Kev, <laughs> Kev, Kev made his first thousand dollars on one thing ever, and we drove to a mall the next day, and he bought seven hundred dollar diamond earrings. That's great. <laughs> That's, That's fucking, great. I love it. I love it too. I it really it. did it all. That was fantastic, Keith. Thanks so much for hanging out with us, Joe. Fucking love to have you in here, man. Thank Please you. come back again soon, Keith. We're gonna we're gonna get into this hip hop thing. Yeah, Keith for Robinson sure. and Joe DeRosa, thanks for coming by. Big J, I love you. Campers, love you follow us at the Bonfire SXM on Twitter, Instagram, all that shit. And Is we'll... there anything you guys want to plug? You want to plug anything coming up? Uh, yeah, Joe, well, I want to plug my podcast, We'll See You in Hell, uh, where we discuss and review horror, sci fi, fantasy movies. You can get it on uh, HeadGum and on iTunes. Oh, yeah, nice, Sick. man, nice. I want to plug uh, Black Lou's new album. <laughs> strictly for my white bitches. Yeah. Called, called Stay in White Pussy. Yeah. Strictly, for, strictly for my frat boys. Yeah. <laughs> called, called I'll Fix That Bot. <laughs> it's, it's called Hootie Who? Yeah. Um, 
I love you, Dan. I love you too, Jay. And we'll, we'll be back you. tomorrow, 6 p.m. live. You know, crackle, crackle. I know Keith's going to make fun of that. <laughs> I, oh, yeah, let's just get off the air before they can do it. Crackle, crackle. I didn't want to say that loud. I love all you. All right, I didn't want to say that loud. All right, I didn't want to say that loud. It's like saying I love you to your mom. I love you. Okay, I love you. Uh,